and uh, we're all gonna be starting off in this game number one draft right now mb starting on the blue side team kittens starting on the red side see if we get a bit of a switch up from what we saw in the first series of the day yeah i'm just expecting more woo from there uh, doom because i know you love it so much do you <laughs> the seraphine please i need more seraphine <laughs> i need more more opportunities to sing more, more opportunities to Ooh, sing and yeah. dance oh yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'd be interesting to see if we actually see jays come through this time because i mean in the entire of that three last three matches we didn't actually see a single jace not even hovered not even flirted with uh, in terms of a decision of picking that jace there so it was a bit of a maybe it was a bit of a misstep or it's been over overdone yesterday maybe we won't see any jace this time around but we've seen that Shen, Gragas, Yone bands. So typical, typical bands that we're used to seeing. Other than the Gragas. Gragas last time. So in the last series, we didn't see Gragas get banned once. He is here to stay. Yep, Shen being banned away. Um, kind of no surprise here on the side of Team Kittens. We did see these two teams play off against each other on the last day of group stage. Um, mm -hmm. Even though uh, Team Kittens won it 2-1, I mean, it was a bit of like a for fun for both for them teams. They were just picking like random picks. They were just having a bit of fun, really, because... Both these teams already had their seed secured, whether it was first seed for Team Kittens or second, uh, second, uh, second, uh, second seed, I should say, uh, for Team MB. But now I think this is where it really comes down to, you know, the team compositions, the players are going to be playing at their full potential because there is a lot on the line for this game. Yeah, that Camille, the Galio, all been taken off of the card straight away in the first three bands of both teams. So we're definitely going to see a switch up of what we were seeing yesterday. So we've still got the Fiora in play, the Jacks in play in the duo lane. Uh, not duo lane, sorry, the Baron lane. Uh, that French introduction completely threw off my English. It's bad enough already, but having French Pokemon sung to you is definitely doing a, a, a number on me. Uh, <laughs> got plenty more where that came from. I've been, I've been, I have been taught the wonders of Pokemon in French. I've been taught the wonders, <laughs> and now my my whole world has been expanded. My whole, I've watched the whole intro as well to Pokemon in French, and it was something that, um, yeah, I probably won't see again. But you know, I I, I won't Truly understand it at all. But yeah, it's uh, it was really really funny. But anyway. First pick here for Nautilus, I think is very interesting, especially with Team MB banning away two supports already with the Gragas and the Galio. That Nautilus rises up in priority, like shoots up in priority um, for the side of Team MB. The interesting thing, though, is that you're banning out these supports against Clue, but Clue has already shown that he can play multiple different supports, whether it be the likes of the... Um, the Brom that he's picked up before. Maybe they play Enchanters down in the bot lane. These are two picks that are quite interesting. Morgana. Now, we did see Morgana in the bot lane uh, for our nation in the previous series. But Vex is a player that has played Morgana jungle before. So, it could be a bit of a flex pick. Yeah, we could see that Wukong in that dual lane. I know we're really anticipated for it once again. <laughs> but, uh, no. Two solid picks there to begin with. But, like you say, with that Nautilus, now we've been taking off the cards. Uh, with the Galio and the Gragas also taken by bands, it, that would be your priority support. But uh, it's Clue. Clue does what Clue does best, and that is support. Will we see a set support on the side this time of the Clue? It could be interesting. We saw it on MB. It worked really well with the utility of the set support, especially with the Haymaker as well. Um, and obviously, his ultimate was fantastic. Um, so seeing that, uh, but we're seeing the bearers go into it. They are taking some notes from Earthog there and taking on the uh, Aatrox pick. Yeah, Aatrox is such a big pick right now. It's such a strong pick and Andre Zed has been playing it a lot in the jungle. So they're getting quite a lot of comfort picks. Heste with a comfort pick onto Nautilus. Varus, Jash loves to play Varus recently. He's been playing it a lot with lot with me in ranked games so it's a champion that he likes to play a lot and Aatrox as well and Andre Z these are all comfort picks there's the bomb pick that I was talking about though for Clue as I mentioned you're banning out champions away from Clue but he has such a wide champion pool Clue that he can play many different supports and Brom is such a great support and such a great defensive support as well now I'm curious to see what MB bans out do they ban out some of the dual laners maybe something like that Seraphine that we were talking about can be a pretty pretty strong pick 
Yeah, because we were assuming that the Morgana is more likely APC, but we, like you said before, Vex has played that Morgana before, so it could be jungle. It could be your APC right now. We, they're not too sure, so obviously the bands could either be look for jungle picks, look for Baron Lane bands. There's quite a few. They've left it open for the imagination with these flex picks, so it is a good job on kittens here doing that. Uh, a bit of a, a bit of a bluff on the side of uh, kittens there that the MB have just got to try and call. Yeah, there goes the Jace, by the way. Yeah, both mid laners getting banned away because none of these mid lane picks have been chosen at the moment. Nakrez and Don still have their champions to pick. So instead of banning out dual lane uh, mages on the side of MB, they focused Don instead in the mid lane. Jace has already been banned away. Zed has been banned away as well. That Yone pick has already been banned away. Akali. There's plenty of mid lane bans that have been uh, taken away. Gwen is another one that could be played in multiple different roles. I'm curious here though, maybe MB is thinking that this Morgana might be down the dual lane for um for Doom. But I'm it's kind of interesting that Team Kittens pick it this early. I, if it's a Morgana pick, I wouldn't really think they would prioritize it this early if they wanted it for Doom down in the dual lane. I think if they wanted someone to prioritize, they would have prioritized like the Varus or the Karma instead. So I really do think this is gonna be jungle Morgana as Yasuo also gets banned away. So a lot of strong mid laners being taken off right now, and it does leave not a lot left really for Don and Nakras. Oh, yeah, oh, Fiora. Uh, is it going to be? Well, it's definitely not going to be a Kaiser, surely not. No. Uh, but yeah, the Fiora has been locked in, so we could have. I mean, again, another flex pick. We see Fiora in the jungle. We've seen Fiora even in mid, uh, and we've seen her in the Baron lane also. So. It's once again, it's a great pick here. Uh, I'm not too sure what MB are going to do for these last two picks, but banning the Gwen, the Yasuo, the Zed, and the Jace once again. Um, three solid mid bands, and then obviously, yeah, Gwen can be jungle or Baron lane as well. But they lock in the Lucian, so we get in Lucian somewhere, more than likely going to be in that mid lane, mm -hmm. most likely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, it'll, it'll, I think it will definitely be mid lane for Nakrez. It's a, a champion that he's played quite a lot. Um, it's an aggressive champion that he likes to play in the mid lane as well. Nakrez is known for this player that likes to play these aggressive picks, whether it be the Akali, the Lucian as well. And then Lonely Kid looks like he might be on Garen duty. I mean, if this is completely wild and it has happened before, then maybe Lucian goes in the Baron lane for Lonely Kid. I don't think that will be the case, but it's definitely a possibility because Lonely Kid has brought it out before. <laughs> But now, Clues hovering a few AD carries. I'm not expecting to see an AD carry here. Um, expecting more to see. There we go. That's what we was maybe. Oh, maybe not. Oh. Maybe it's going to be the Ziggs in the end. The Ziggs. Okay, so it's not going to be the Seraphine. It's going to be the Zig. So this does mean that it is Morgana Jungle for Vex. Now, obviously, Morgana Jungle is not as strong as what it was a long, long time ago. Morgana was one of the champions that was first picked priority about a few months ago when the jungle kind of got... Um, kind of nerfed in a way with when you can use the um use morgana to take two camps at the same time but he still has you know morgana still has decent jungle clear i think you do have to be quite careful though as morgana especially with trades early on because i'm looking at these matchups at the moment nacros is going to get priority in the mid lane baron lane i'm not too sure who's going to get the priority in the 2v2 probably heste and um lonely kid will get that priority in the 2v2 because we got clue on brom so vex does need to be careful on this morgana pick maybe going for the aggressive ganks because she can get caught out quite easily Definitely, yeah. So it's all about utilizing uh, the roots, the AOEs on the jungle clear, trying to make it as fast as possible, trying to get her ahead of the enemy jungle, uh, which is going to be difficult. Because, I mean, Aatrox, early, early game in jungle, we've seen it in the last match uh, where it dominated against the Gwen. So as long as we don't see the Morgana getting caught out by Andreas there on the Aatrox, they should be fine. Um, but it's all about that Baron lane as well. So the Baron lane matchup with the Wu against the Garen with the Nautilus and the Braum there. It's going to be an interesting matchup. But like you say, I think uh, Hestis and uh, Lonely Kid will probably end up peeping that one. Uh, and then as for the dual lane, interesting. We've got the uh, Morgana against the Lucian. So a bit of a hard matchup uh, in terms of most of the lanes. But then again, these are two of the best teams. They are definitely drafting for a reason in this way. Uh, and hopefully they can just manage the uh, proposition and placement of the Ziggs to be optimal within these team fights. So a lot of damage. Uh, those bombs being on point as well. But uh, without further ado, we are into the first match of the series. 
Uh, first match of this best of five to see who will be crowned the champions of Rift Legends season one. It's been an, an insane few months here in EU for Wild Rift Esports. It's nice to have some sort of competition, uh, even though it's not the expected competition that we really wanted to see. But it's nice to see uh, that Riot and Purge are still supporting the EU scene in Wild Rift. And we still have some of the best players that have lived lived to fight another day and now we'll have to see who, who is going to be coming out on top these both these teams like i said have so many you know interesting players that have so many cool stories behind them and it's so interesting to see that they all just kind of mix together now into one team you know we speak about mb where you have like a few players that used to play on game lord before team queso parlor you know, a few players that used to play on so many different teams. And the same with um, Kittens as well. Two players that used to play on Formulation with Don and Vex. And three players that were on the side of um, Rook.GG. So it's kind of been a situation where it's like they've been trying to just grab the best players together and trying to be uh, do enough. And this is what I was saying about this Morgana pick. Morgana in the early game is not that strong. And this means that you can get the aggression with that early game priority in the mid lane. And they're going to yeah. steal away the red buff. Really well played. And again, kind of predicted it in champ select. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the Aatrox is probably a really good pick here in the jungle for the aggression, the early game lead as well, being able to deny the Morgana. Uh, going one to one with a ja uh, an Aatrox, sorry, is something that you uh, only see in Nightmares, especially when you're playing the Morgana right now. Um, maybe in previous patches it may have been a different story, but um, yeah, like you were saying, reiterating on the, fa the fact of that it's nice to still see some of these players still within the scene, um, but also seeing some of these brand new teams, some of these new players coming to shine as well. But these are the best of the best so far, um, and we're still happy to have them within the scene and riot support with purge so um much appreciated with that one and then having you guys in the chat spreading it socially is only going to do numbers for us so thank you very much but less about that more about this morgana is looking to stay in their jungle now she uh i don't think vex is too happy about that little invade to begin with no, it looks like he's trying to invade back, but I think Andres has already cleared his whole bot side of his jungle, so there was no red buff to be taken there for Vex. He tried his best to try and steal away another camp, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to. Josh uses the ghost. Andres is here as well. Dodges away from the binding. Oh. Just missing out the snipe onto the Ziggs, and the Aatrox is not getting too close to the Ziggs. Being able to disengage there was a miracle for dooms because that could have been a possible first blood we may see it here in the mid lane as well nautilus is not too sure who he wants to support right now uh, aatrox is looking away into the enemy jungle once again uh, it seems like this is going to be his play style going forward through this match in the series is just be heavily aggressive put the pressure on the morgana so she does not get ahead yeah i mean i think they're doing it quite well for now unfortunately andre said did take a little bit of poke damage from doom so he wasn't able to invade in terms of the blue buff but you can see the plan that mb have this game shut down this morgana make sure that this morgana cannot free farm because morgana still has one of the quickest jungle clears out of any champion in the game right now and if you leave the morgana alone to just farm up then it can be a big big problem looking out this baron lane i think this is really excuse me really the matchup to look at is lonely kid against random these two players have fought against each other so many times and these are arguably two of the best baron laners in eu right now not really the matchup that i wanted to see really uh, to start things off in this series it's a bit of a a boring bruiser versus bruiser or tank versus yeah. tank matchup that is not really a lot of excitement but i'm sure as this series goes on we're going to be seeing some great matchups and, and some great plays from both these players definitely Definitely, but like I say, it's definitely on the cards for Aatrox to be as aggressive as possible. Uh, a lot of tip back going on. on in these lanes. Fiora activating that ultimate onto um, Nakrez there, but not being able to see all the way through and get that first blood. Because first blood, I mean, we're currently going into five minutes and not a sniff of first blood yet. We've seen the jungle objectives come up before first blood. 
Yeah, I think this is kind of really expected, to be honest. I mean, it's hard to predict when the first blood's going to be, but both these teams have so much respect for each other. I think they know that because they played against each other, whether it's last year in competitive, whether it was in whether it's in high level ranks, whether it's even this year as well. They played against each other and they know the skill that each of the, each other has. You can see at the moment, they're both just playing around these objectives. And Vex is actually completely ditching this dragon and going instead for the Rift Herald. See Lonely Kid trying his best to try and stop Vex from taking this away. Mm -hmm. Vex is taken low, but MB are going to look to try and contest this Rift Herald. Definitely a bit of a bait and switch there from the side of Kittens. And they do secure the Rift Herald. They get the first blood as well onto Lonely Kid. So... We see Lonely Kid actually coming in there, looking like a bit of a threat, but then we see straight away Nakrez coming in with a response of that first blood, getting a 1-1 trade. Not quite as in a team fight format. There were two different team fights going on there, but he got the first um, response of a kill there in the mid lane. But well played for both of the teams, getting those objectives, especially with um, the way Vex played that one. A bit of a switch and bait going for the the mountain drake but then seeing mb come along they decide to go for the rift herald lonely kid tried to deny it but they still got it yeah it's kind of unlucky really from lonely kid as well because he tried his uh, lonely kid tried his best to try and uh steal away the dragon uh steal away the rift herald sorry unfortunately did risk his life for it they did as you said trade one for one and that rift herald is going to be used in the mid lane so a little bit of a um so some few tower platings over to vex but i think the big thing is at the moment is that the goal lead actually is in mb's favor so overall they've taken the, the little advantages from this but look at that jungle lead at the moment the jungle lead is huge for kittens but on the other side that bot lane difference at the moment jash has a pretty big lead against doom Yep, let me just put my glasses back on to stare at those little numbers. <laughs> I took them off for a second for a little break, and I was like, yeah, I can't see those numbers with my glasses. I'm clearly getting too old. But there we go. Yeah, you can definitely see those gold leads. Oh, Nautilus going in with that ultimate catching it onto one of, uh, Wukong there, and it then actually doing a lot of damage. It's a 4v1 under the turret, and you are secure in a kill if you are going to 4v1 under that turret. So nicely done there by MB getting the second kill on the board for themselves. And here we are, we're seeing it. They're still advancing. They're still giving some aggression. And Aatrox is that champion you want to be aggressive with it. But also at the same time, they are losing that bot lane turret. So they get the Baron lane. So retrospectively, I was thinking that that was a better trade for Kittens. But then we saw MB call back straight away and get that Baron lane turret. So it's an even trade, but they do get that extra kill. So a little bit more gold in the favor of MB here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, overall, I think you would much prefer to take the mid lane tower. So then Ziggs can just go into the mid lane, throw your bombs, always get a mid lane priority. If you were to talk to anyone, you'd be like, okay, mid lane tower is much better to take than Baron lane tower. But MB were able to take a kill, uh, kill as well in the Baron side. And I think it was really nice and really decisive from them to try and take it away. Now, Chris here using the calling just to do a little bit of poke damage. But you can see that MB at the moment are just grouping up together, trying to take this side, these side lane towers. And they are doing so, so well at the moment. Andre said, even trying to look for another flank here. Oh, look at this. He's going all the way around right now. I'm not too sure where he's going. Yep. Don takes very low on health, but the bomb from the ultimate from Doom is enough to clear the way for now. And you can see how close this these skirmishes are already. That both of these teams are going neck and neck right now the gold lead is pretty much exactly even and this is what i wanted to see bland in the grand final both these teams there's no runaway in this series there's not going to be a 3-0 i don't think in, the, in this series i think it's going to be neck and neck for the whole time definitely and there we go we see another turret fall so it is two turrets to one on the side of mb here um this is probably the first time in the playoffs we're seeing two adcs being played as well so it's definitely a much excitement for yourself, Stuart, loving the ADCs being pulled out here. Uh, but if, within this team comp, I think it's great because they have the Garen and they have the Aatrox as well, being able to just bully up. They also have the Nautilus as well, if uh, either of those two Titans fall. But then they've got this Snipe from the Varus, and we know how much damage that can do. We have that CC Ultimate, and then we have the the Lucia oh, binding. Flips down and melt damage. We're seeing the Nautilus all going onto Vex there. Nautilus has actually re-engaged with that hook. 
Uh, we see Clue putting up that shield. A bit of a stage there to nullify the damage from the Morgana AoE. But we're going to see Nautilus drop here. There's a bit of a shield. They do get it. So we see the Riven take the kill from the Nautilus. But here's Garen going in with those slam dunks. Uh, we're seeing another double kill here for Fiora now. So a great pick here for Don. He is going in. He is working that back line. We see the Wukong go back and engage onto the Garen as well. So this is looking like a 3-0 trade. Kittens are actually going to try and wipe out the team here. Andreas is on the run from a 4v1 here. He's looking to escape and he's just about got out of there. But Ziggs is pushing this mid lane as well before he recalls. It is a free Rift Herald once again for Kittens. 4 for 0 trade for Kittens and you felt like Heste was just on not on the same page as the rest of his team there. He was the one using his ultimate trying to defend off against Nakrez but a few Really good dot bindings by Vex caught out a few members on the side of MB and they were completely split in that fight. They were not on the same page. They didn't know what they were doing in that fight and Kittens did so well to just group up together. Random and Don jumping in onto the back line and now they're going to try and best try the best to secure this second dragon which they need to try and take away from MB. Definitely, yeah. So being able to go into a team fight uh, about 10 minute mark as well, get a 4 0 and then get Rift Herald as well. Uh, this is the kind of thing we need to see from Kittens. They've now sort of peeped the gold difference in their favor ever so slightly, just like uh, MB had earlier on. It was literally a few hundred. Uh, we're seeing a fight here. Random salty. Dragon. Are we maybe going to see the same sort of tactic from MB that we saw from Urfog earlier? Was we'll just secure those dragons. Don't worry about that gold difference. Get the dragons. Don't tilt and see what they can do with a gradual build of the gold. But it's looking like that uh, dragon is definitely getting reset here. It's not going to be an easy one. They drop the Rift Herald to put a little bit of pressure on here to Team MB. It's not going to completely get rid of that turret, I don't think. It's not even attached yet. But uh, it's still got a while to go. It could get a two charge <laughs> on that turret with nobody <laughs> nearby. This is so intense, Blam. Both these teams, look at them. They're both posturing around the dragon. This is only the second dragon of the game. And we're already getting a dragon dance. We do see the mid lane tower actually did go down. And the Rift Herald is doing so, so much at the moment for Kittens. He might even yep. get a charge off on the inhibitor tower. And it used as a distraction. But here we go. The dragon's below 1k health. Who's going to smite it? Oh, they get it. Vex steals the dragon there. So they start it. They get it. But well, we're seeing a kill go from a 1-1. One, one. It's now 2-2 two, two trade going on here. Even trades. Uh, Andreas Vex, having to maybe? use that oh, ult. Don in. There we go. They're going oh. in. Don diving a bit too quick without his teammates there. He gets melted down by the Lucian. That was a bit unfortunate there. Don was onto a winner, but he dived a bit too deep, a bit too fast for the Morgana and the Ziggs, but noted that Rift Herald made it to the inhibitor and got a charge. Yeah, they got a huge inhibitor charge there. They got another tower in the mid lane. They got another charge on the inhibitor tower as well. It's such a big play from Kittens using that Rift Held as a distraction to secure the objective. And the poke damage in the end from Doom on the Ziggs was enough to just push Andre Z away from the dragon and allow Vex to, to secure it from himself and for his team. And the team fight afterwards was very, very scrappy. It was actually MB coming out on top in the fight because Don stepped a little bit too far but you can see at the moment how well Vex is playing on this Morgana pick. But Andre said yeah. on the other side as well, both these junglers have such huge goal leads compared to the rest of their team. Definitely, yeah. So that early game aggression from uh, Andreas there has actually not done... Uh, it's not tilted uh, Vex too much. He's sort of just keeping a level head. He's then just thinking, no, let's think uh, ahead of time. Let's think of the bigger picture. Let's just make sure we're securing these massive jungle objectives rather than over these uh, red buffs and uh, blue buffs. We're seeing that gold difference only in a slight bit of hundreds there in the favor still of uh, Vex in the jungle. We're seeing Lonely Kid pretty low. He's got some damage over time there. He's looking very, very low, but it's a 2 Hold one. on, hold on. on. Don Hold on. here, but Don is trying his best clue in. Oh, Ziggs ultimate just missing out on Andreas there. That would have been massive, massive damage. It would have been a kill there on Andreas, but Clue and Don have to be careful. It is now a 4-2. Oh, hook flash! Ziggs coming in here. Oh, oh he Doom. Oh, parry! That parry was so nice! 
Don parries the OT. Don with the insane outplays on the Fiora. First, he survives the one versus two. Then he parries the Garen ultimate and kills away Lonely Kid as well. My God, Don, that was insane. That was absolute violation there from Don. And I mean, we've seen Wukong take that Baron lane as well. He's got a good push within the Baron lane also. Um, so some really good management there from the team. We saw a great uh, uneven team fight that actually went in the favor of Kittens there. Don being an absolute star with that parry. And uh, when you're playing Fiora, that is the mechanic you need to look out for. It's not about diving for the back line, taking out those kills. It's also about that parry. Getting that parry on point makes the whole difference of a good Fiora and an amazing Fiora. My God, it was absolutely insane play there. You can see that MB was trying their best to try and catch up Don because he was so, so low on health. But Don was getting so much healing from the Divine Sunderer and from his passive as well, proccing the vitals onto Lonely Kid. And Lonely Kid has not had the best start of this series. I mean, Lonely kid is a player that's used to playing all these curry picks whether it be like the likes of fiora Jax, all these champions but you're sticking you're sticking a, a lonely kid one of your best playmaking champions on a garen which is not really the sort of pick that you want to see chain of corruption in though in the top side oh. the counter engage though here we go yeah we've seen that cyclone from wukong a uh, lonely kid once again trying to get out there with little health wukong going back in with that uh tricksters Bing, the uh, the clone once again. Ziggs was trying to find Doom there, trying to find a kill under the turret with that. But we're seeing uh, Nakras take a kill on Don there. One v one. Yeah, it was a one v one solo kill there for. Oh my God, the damage. Doom ulti. Oh, I don't think he has it available. He only only doesn't have it up at the moment. That could have been another kill there over to Doom. Unfortunately, not. Doom at the moment currently one zero and six hasn't died a single time this game right now. And he is doing so, so well on this Ziggs. Just do, trying his best to stay back and stay passive. Andre is dead here. Trying to catch up random. He stays here as well. This is four versus one. But the rest of Kittens are here. Oh, nice little bomb in. there from Doobs. <laughs> Vex is in there deep, but oh, a little bit too deep. We see a trade. It is a 1v1 trade there because that Fiora casualty for us from earlier. So we thought Varus actually got the one up on a Vex there, but we then saw that damage over time go onto the Vex as well. So a nice 1v1 one -one trade there. Um, we will see Vex pop up again in 35 seconds, but that dragon is up. Andreas is still there. So he could then make his way after this recall straight to the dragon. But we're seeing Random actually looking to start a fight and get the um, dragon possibly. He has just got the help. I thought maybe going for the Rift Skull there. But Rift Skull is not up just yet. But it's going to be a 4v4 here. But they do have a smite on the side of MB. So it's going to be very, very close if they start this team fight right now. Yeah, I think Random just kind of working as a distraction here, just trying to stall the dragon, making sure MB doesn't take it before Vex comes up. You can see Don doing really, really well here to push that bot lane, get that lane priority in the bot side. You can see the MB pretty much have to go back and take this wave in the bot side because there's so much experience, there's so much gold that they're losing in the bot lane. And this means that now Vex is back up alive and Kittens have priority over this dragon. This, this first game is everything I wanted to see from this series. Back and forth team fight insane outplays these are the best players that you're watching right now in the eu scene this is the grand final of rift legends season one this is only game number one as well we could potentially be getting five games in this series so make sure if you're in the chat make sure you're sharing it make sure you're telling your friends your family your pets your dogs your cats get them all tuned in we need, we need everything we can get now to help these players Ooh, out. Andre's Andre's going going in in. In. Oh, he tried to steal the dragon there. That was so close, but Vex just keeps that smite there. And here we go. They are focusing the Andreas there. So down goes the Aatrox. So it is a 1-1 one, one trade now. Don't go a bit too deep there, but managed to get the kill on Aatrox. We're seeing the... Um, Garen, Lonely Kid, very low. Nautilus trying to get out there with his B-Tech Spider-Man skills with that hook. Once again, tries it. Everyone's chasing after Hestus. He is taking one for his teammates what? right now. He is definitely b teching it away, <laughs> but there we go. Vex gets it. She lands that AoE damage onto the Nautilus. 25 seconds. 
Is it that time already for Elder Dragon? It seems like this match has just begun. It's crazy that the Elder Dragon is up right now. It's coming up in 16 seconds. What is going on? Yeah, there was only a few more seconds left for that Infernal Dragon to be taken. And it was taken in the end by Vex with the Smite Fight win in the end. But as you mentioned, five more seconds until the Elder Drake. We're already at 20 minutes in this game. It's been so fun to watch that you feel like it's only been only a couple of minutes in this game. It's gone by so so quickly but now this is really what it comes down to we always say that these elder dragons are the best win condition for any one of these two teams but kittens are the one ones that have been getting priority over these objectives for now and getting this um, river control they're getting the side lanes pushed they're getting the mid wave pushed in every single time and it means that they have control over this river river and they can get this vision priority jash uses the stasis to stop the damage okay i'm not too sure what i think about that so josh doesn't yeah, have stasis we've a, up we've got a split team uh, split push going on here we've got the uh Nacrez and the andreas split oh, on the back side and then we have them here is a 4v5 but they, they've evened it to a 4v4 because they've got the fiora random on fiora pushing that baron lane as well to get, put some pressure on to try and stop this team fight but andreas is taking a lot of hits he has Nakrez here for support. We have uh, Jash here also, and Lonely Kid is looking here as well, but he is pretty much at two thirds of health. Andreas trying to find a way back around, trying to find a way in on Doom on this Ziggs. Oh, the bind on Ziggs. Jash. Great here. They do take out oh. the Ziggs. Oh, they take out Jash as well. So no, uh, no damage carriers here, but they do still have Delusion here as Random's the second hand. The double off. kill goes again for Random there. On the Wukong, they are going in hard oh, on Lonely MB, King. but Lonely Kid gets a kill. There is still only Smite, but we have Doom, uh, not Doom, sorry, Don oh, here pushing that Baron lane. So much going on. What is going on this game? This game is absolutely fiesta. Andre Zed might be dying here, but Don is pushing in the base right now. Don is in a 1v1 against Heste. Heste is trying all he can to defend this base. You don't have a lot of damage, but you do have enough tankiness to stop this game from ending. And my God, that team fight was just so back and forth. We saw on one side, Josh got caught on the, on the back line and Randa was able to dash in. Doom also got caught as well. Both these duo lane carries were caught in the back line and nothing happens we still yep, don't know happens. what way this direction which way this game is going right now definitely i mean that was absolutely nuts just seeing all those trades go off under the dragon dragon still rocking itself still feeling itself in its pit but we see that that's massive that baron lane push there from don was a massive thing because when they re-engage for this dragon next time, they're gonna have somebody missing from the team fights and it's gonna be Lonely Kid having to combat those empowered minions in the Baron lane. Um, he's managed to hold them off for so far. He's in the jungle. He's flickering between them because they also have the mid lane push as well. So the pressure is on. They have the hall breaker here with Don as well. So it's kind of currently looking for a matchup for the 1v1, but we're seeing Andreas come round here as well. Can we see a 2v1? Can Don do another 2v1? Here's Doom oh, uh, with in. that ultimate. He catches some of the damage. He statuses as well very nicely. Clue in here to give some assistance. But down goes Elder Don. Don is down. Down goes the kill. The dragon is taken. They have that, but can they manage to do it? Here they are taking out. They are taking names there. Drinking milk, <laughs> taking names, Random. all of the milk, we're getting a quadra kill here. Can we get a first no! penter in the playoffs? Vex oh. still oh. the penter kill random in game number one on this Wukong. What an insane performance. Nearly gets the penter kill as well in game number one. Vex actually flashed away to try and save random for getting the penter kill. And he wasn't able to get it. He flashed forward. He was in the animation of his first ability as well. He was so close to using his first ability and getting a penter kill. But what an insane same game number one that we have just watched random on this wukong time and time again was able to get into the back line was able to do so much for his ultimate to get so much crowd control so much healing and so much damage as well and don on this fiora they're one versus two outplays but absolutely insane what a great game number one 
Yeah, I mean, it's definite that Fiora is definitely in the ban mix in this next match. If it isn't, it's a bit of a silly mistake here for MB. But what a match. I mean, not only was it two, it was two attempts for that Elder Dragon. They managed to get it. That team fight in the end could have gone either way. The only reason they got that team fight towards the end was definitely that Elder Dragon. As we always say, that win condition is the Elder Dragon currently. Uh, but uh, I would only, there's only one other place I would have liked to have been other than casting right now is in that voice chat when we saw <laughs> Vex steal that pentakill oh as well. I would God. have been screaming. That was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And I mean, you can tell it's a good match or a fantastic match. Like we just didn't even look at the time and we was like, wait, Elder how to drink it? And it was just like, <laughs> it was just take, it took us by surprise because we just weren't watching the clock. There was just so much time going, uh, so much things just going on. If it weren't a team fight, it was a push in the lane. It was a 1v1. It was a 2v1 in Don's case and coming in on top with that Fiora with the fantastic parries. But yeah, it's just a phenomenal first match. This is what the grand finals are all about. For sure, it's everything we wanted and more, I feel like, Blam. And going into game number two, MB are going to stay on the blue side for this second game. So feeling, feeling like uh, maybe draft wasn't too much of the problem. Uh, maybe something to do with the gameplay itself. Maybe they'll switch off the draft and maybe ban a few other champions. I think that Wukong pick was so well played by random in the end that that needs to be sorted out. Whether it's, you know, first picked, whether it's banned away, anything like that. It's actually the Morgana, interesting enough that they ban away. I didn't feel like Vex had that much of an impact i mean the later stages he had a pretty decent impact but in that early game i feel like mb did really well at pressuring morgana and kind of shutting her down in that early game yeah definitely like we were seeing with that uh, atrox early game shutting down the morgana we didn't have much uh, influence but we saw vex actually peep those um smite differences there we i think it's all down to that aoe as well on the morgana as well as the assisted uh and there, wukong so. Hey, that's it, yeah. And Wukong, Wukong gone. Um, it's clear that they don't want to focus that Fiora. Maybe they end up picking it themselves. We are yet to see it, but they, with them being on the blue side, they only get the first blue pick, and then on red, they will get two picks. So it's going to be interesting to see if this time the draft's going to be the same or a little bit different on the side of Kittens. But they go for the Caliban once again. Yeah, the same bands for Kittens. It is MP that's switching things up. Nautilus first pick again? I, I'm not too sure if I like this. I mean, you, you kept the Galio open this time around. You ban away, yes. um, you know, the Morgana and the Wukong, but then you just keep the Galio open. So Galio can easily be picked up here from, for Clue if he wants to take it away. Um, again, you know, the likes of the, the Wukong, uh, Wukong is obviously banned. You've got Aatrox that is open that can be picked up on the side of Kittens. I think there are a few picks that Kittens can definitely pick up for themselves that are going to be really kind of stronger pits than this Nautilus. There's the zigs again for Doom down in that dual lane. Had a pretty, pretty decent first game, was caught a few times, but still did a ton of damage. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Ziggs was, um, if it's not broke, don't fix it. If it's not banned, pick it. Uh, the Ziggs is definitely a good one to go for. The Nautilus, again, it's a questionable pick, but we saw Hestis towards the end, obviously, being the BTEC Spider-Man that Nautilus is, with that hook, he's managed to get out of there. He managed to split up the team fight a little bit with that chase, but it didn't do anything. And they do secure that Fiora once again, so they're going for the same old Sung and Dance. Will it make them win this second round as well? Because, I mean... Don's performance on that Fiora was brilliant. Yeah, I think the, the Fiora is definitely a denial away from Lonely Kid at the same time. It can be on the hands of Don. Random can also play it in the barrel lane as well. Yone is actually open and wasn't mm. picked up for Don in the mid lane or even for Vex in the jungle. So it's actually going to be picked up here by MB. I don't know who this is going to go on though, to be fair. I don't remember MB playing Yone too much. I mean, the last time I remember Yone being played by any of these players was probably Lonely Kid in the barrel lane, but I'm not too sure if that's going to yeah. be the, the correct way to go here for MB. Very excited to see Yone finally picked up here and not being banned away. Nasus, I was going to say, Nasus is a bit of a weird one. I was a bit, I was a bit, yeah, I was a little bit confused for a second, but I mean, that might be a playmaking champion that Lonely Kid wants to take to the barrel lane. This Yone pick was with this Corky picked up. Is Corky good, could go down in the dual lane or could go in the mid lane for Nacros? But there's that Galio that I was talking about. Yeah, I mean, with Galio free up in that 
first three bands not being banned this time around. I think it was just a, a matter of time, especially with that Nautilus being picked, because uh, we weren't going to see the Nautilus jungle, let's face it. Uh, but that Galio was definitely on the cards to be picked by Kittens there in that first three picks. Uh, Corky, we saw MB go on Corky yesterday. We saw uh, Josh go 11-2 uh, on the Corky. So if you can bring that same kind of energy... Uh, we could see a great Corky play here, and once again, Corky is a great champion. I'll always say it, and I'll keep saying it for stealing those jungle objectives. For sure, yeah. The package just offers so much for the team fight, whether it is the team fight, whether it is, in, you know, in terms of the um, the uh, the objectives, as you mentioned, you know, jungle objectives with the package as well. He just offers so much for a team. He has such a strong one item power spike as well with that Trinity Force, which normally gets picked up every single time. He's a really, really strong champion in the current meta. We're going to be seeing a few bands across the board. Zed and Jace being banned away here on the side of Kittens. Makes me feel like this is maybe another Fiora mid lane pick uh, for the side of Team Kittens. It could very much well be as a Jax and Karzix gets banned away here for MB. So Kittens now looking for a jungler here for Vex. The Vi... Has been something that Vex has been playing a lot. I've been watching his streams. I think Vex played, um, he plays like full damage Vi. I'm not too sure if he's going to go for the same full damage Vi in this game. I think he goes for like Trinity Force, Blade of the Rune King, Solari Charge Blade, Infinity Edge, some disgusting full damage Vi build. I don't think we'll see it in this series because I don't think it's very optimal in, um, in competitive play. But in ranked play, obviously, it's a lot more of a, a, a carry build. Um, but yeah, Vi uh, for Vex is still a pretty decent comfort pick. I want to see how our MB responds. Definitely, yeah. We're seeing that Jace take off the cards once again. So Jace has been put in the naughty corner today because we did see him get played quite a bit. Maybe he's just been exhausted in terms of being that pro pick because we saw some really good uh, Jace plays on both the side of Kittens and MB in both their matches. So, um, yeah, it's just definitely one of those picks that I think the one off the card. Zed's once again being that in a naughty corner as well. We've seen the Renekton and the uh, possible set coming out once again. Set was a great pick for MB yesterday. Great utility within that. Um, I mean, where's that set going to go? I, I, think it's, into... I think it's Nautilus Jungle. I think it actually is also Nautilus Jungle for Andre Zed, which is something that I was not expecting. Oh, okay. So you got Red oh, you Renekton top lane for Lonely Kid, mid lane Nakrez um, on the um, Yone, and then you have Corky and the set, obviously, for Heste in the bot lane. But yeah, as you mentioned, Heste had a great performance on the set yesterday. Um, absolutely insane showstoppers at the end of the, uh, the game. Mm. It could also be, you know, Renekton in the mid lane and... Uh, Yone in the barrel lane for Lonely Kid. But yeah, this looks like is what it's going to be. I mean, I've not seen Andre Zed play Nautilus at all. Obviously, AP Nautilus is very, very popular at the moment. Vex is normally the one picking it up. But it's actually going to be Andre Zed this time around. And Gwen mid lane for the Don against this pick of Yone. So some spicy matchups. I mean, this is the sort of barrel lane matchup I wanted to see as well. You know, Lonely Kid against Random. Renekton against Fiora. It's going to be absolutely insane, especially with the supports as well. That's going to be paired with them in the barrel lane. Really excited for this game too. Yeah, a bit more technical support, uh, technical plays with the Renekton and the Fiora because it's not. These are the two champs that you just can't spam the abilities and the, what a bad Fiora player is basically doing, and a bad Renekton player is just spam those abilities and hope for the best. But yeah, matched up with the Galio and the set in that barrel lane is going to be a really. I think it's going to be a good brawl in that lane because Galio you've got the taunt you've got the dash for the knockup as well and then set you've got the haymakers you've got his ultimate there's a lot of cc going on there so it's going to be a big big old clash in that baron lane I'm, I'm expecting big things from this match in the baron lane to be honest because last match we didn't see too much going on uh, um with them being both uh Garen it's gone tags, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, that's it. Whereas the Fiora and the Renekton, it's a bit better matchup, especially to cast as well. But being accompanied by the Galio and the well, set is definitely one to watch. Me. Yeah, I think it's going to be very exciting to see if anything does change in this matchup and whether it does uh, make an effect on things when it comes to the game itself. But speaking of the game, here we are. Game number two between Kittens and MB. MB are going to try their best to try and take this to a 1-1, but Kittens performed very well in game number one. They're looking to try and close out this series at a 3-0 by trying to take this second game. 
there's some exciting matchups as i mentioned this yone versus gwen mid lane is going to be super exciting renekton versus fiora with the playmaking potential that heste has on this set it's going to be super super exciting yeah, I mean, we're seeing the uh, the best, uh, I mean, Don, sorry, on um, Gwen taking both the Flash they're already and fighting. the Sprint as well. I know, but yeah, they're going for it in that Baron lane. Like I said, the big oh, old bash up. Oh, is that it? Yes, first blood, 40 seconds in with the uh, Ignite and the Flash. Both Bells exhausted, but exhausted for a good cause. That was the first blood already for MB beautiful play there and you know we were kind of talking about it this top lane is going to have a lot more action than the previous one and we've already seen first blood in 40 seconds which is about five minutes quicker than the previous game so already this game has gone off to a very very spicy start definitely definitely there was me just popping uh look, having a look at gwen's uh some of the spells and then we see rennington absolutely go full a balls to the wall with that flash agni ignite to close the kill on clue there um uh, obviously using that taunt a little bit too early uh, it could have been used under that turret i think and maybe we would have seen a trade with the lonely kid as well but uh, yeah like you were saying it, five minutes earlier on this uh first blood it's definitely setting this match up to be an absolute all out guns blazing in the baron lane yeah, for sure. You can already see the aggression coming in as well. Heste, good parry though from random. Actually mm -hmm. stops the um, stops the root there or the stun there from Heste. Really, really well played there by random. But look, I, I, Andre said is up here though, trying to do his best to maybe stop something. Andre said is also level five as well. So maybe they're going to yep. look to push in this lane and maybe look for a tower dive. I mean, they got the 3v2. I mean, it's not now. quite the, the, the secured 3v1 kill under the turret, but they do have another Macros one. Chris is up here as well. As well, here we go. Clue straight in with the dash oh, and the taunt. The but Seth's still coming away with a kill. Here comes Gwen. Double kill already. Can she get a triple kill this early? The flash in from Vex. It was absolutely incredible play there from Vex. The tower there dive in the end did not work out. Nacris was there to try and defend MB. But in the end, Vex was an absolutely insane flash first ability there. Knocks up three members on the side of MB. Follows it up with the assault and battery. And that's a huge swing around for Kittens. Definitely, definitely. Uh, we saw Hestis coming in there, getting the kill as well. And then Do uh, Dom was just like, hold my beer. I'm going in for uh, <laughs> a double kill here. <laughs> going in. And then he managed to do it. So seeing that sprint as well with the dash, that was just beautifully executed by Dom. But I think, uh, should we expect anything less from his skill on the Fiora last match and now on the Gwen this time around? It's just, uh, <laughs> he's pulling out all the stops right now. For sure, it just shows how well these players can play on many, many different champions. And you can see the respect as well going on the side of Nakra is going for wit's end as the first item. It's definitely something that we don't really see on the Yone as the first item, but putting respect and realizing that there's so much AP damage, there's more action there in this Baron lane. They just keep fighting and fighting. They don't know when to stop, but look who's here again for a second yep. time. Vex is here. <laughs> And nothing happens. I got hyped for nothing. I, I, nothing happened. I thought he was going to ulti. I thought he was going to do something. I was like, cool, he's coming. He's going to ulti. He just didn't do anything. I got disappointed. I got hyped for no reason. It's like that, uh, like that meme where it's uh, the, the guy with the stick poking something saying, do something. That's what he's expecting from Bex there. But not quite following please. it through. <laughs> but no, uh, he's clearly saving it for a playmaker coming up. He's uh, close by in that lane again, but we do have blue team having some vision in that bush now to preempt that Vex invade. But we have 28 seconds on the jungle objectives. This time around, it is the Infernal Drake first time. So, ooh. Uh, what a spicy dragon to come up with. And we're seeing Don put some aggression onto this bot lane turret as well. Ooh. We had to flash away there from Andre Zed. Was a little bit worried about the engage there. With the Rift Held coming up in five seconds as well. And that's a big, big summoner spell going down there for Doom. Has to be careful because something um, like the ultimate from the Nautilus can really shut down um, Doom. But it does look like the Rift Held is going to go in the favor of MB. As I say that, there is a ward going down. 
the kittens are going to try and stop this, but I don't think it'll do anything. Yeah, the dragon's just going to be taken. I think this is just going to be a trading objectives. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, personally, I think the Infernal Drake would have been great. Uh, oh, Tower Dive? Better pick, to be honest. Yep, Tower Dive there. I mean, they could probably put that in the Baron lane. Uh, Baron lane probably the most damage to it out of them all for kittens right now. But we're seeing a bit of a uh, 2v2 going on now. But we're seeing the set rotate round with Andreas here. Uh, being forced away because they have been seen. But uh, that could have been a almighty engage there from both of those uh, Titans. Both the set and the Nautilus coming in there with the Corky and the Yone. It probably would have been caught down moment for Vex and Gwen. It just shows at the moment like both both these supports are rotating around like like junglers at the same like, at the same time you know both andre zed and uh sorry not andre zed both heste and clue both rotating around with their junglers trying to make plays across the map because there's not really any action happening in this mid lane at the moment interesting enough andre zed has not used a rift hold yet tower platons are dropping in about 30 seconds time there you go he's gonna go to the mid lane now and drop it in that mid lane get a few tower platons and get a, a bit of gold for himself He's gonna get give a little bit of gold over to josh as well with that share gold josh i'm not too sure you want to be here you do need to be careful yeah. more action in the baron lane though there we go galio going in with that ultimate we were seeing a setup of a two a turret take there we've got the minions currently going on that baron lane turret as well the mid turret is still alive zig's going one v one against the josh here oh, who's josh, gonna play alive no! oh ooh, there goes don straight a uh, random sorry straight in onto Jash there it is now a one a two one trade currently uh set still currently into deep and it is a three one trade on the side of kittens this time around oh my god Jash with the outplay was so so close he valkyrie the ziggs bomb at first then he flashed away from the second ziggs bomb and he nearly outplayed with that one auto attack but unfortunately it wasn't enough and the rest of uh, kittens were there to defend him but lonely kid now oh, is in a whole lot of trouble he's lonely and he got caught, he got taken as a three one or just to basically the walk past the turret with clue there so clue Going in with a dive and the taunt, taking out the lonely kid in the Baron Lane. Not quite getting that Baron Lane turret though, but Ziggs is definitely making a work for this uh, middle turret as well as Gwen defending that bot lane. So no turrets have fallen, but we've seen the Rift Herald being put down in that mid lane. They managed to get some gold from that, uh, but yet still no turret taken. Uh, I mean, it could be the Baron Lane to go first. We're seeing the Nautilus set and uh, the Jash here as well. I think it's about time we see a turret fall, but we're seeing a 3v3 under the turret. Yeah, they're trying to defend the tower. Looks like they are going to defend the tower in the end. MB are struggling really, really hard to try and siege mm. these towers at the moment. But both teams have not had a single tower go down at eight minutes in this game. The mid lane towers are low. The baron lane towers are low. And the same with the dual lane towers. Like all the towers are so, so low. But maybe finally here we get the first tower being taken in the mid lane. The satchel charge comes out one more. Oh, no! Ooh. Doom actually Ooh, used the satchel yonate. charge too early. Doom had to just wait, but they do get a kill in the barrel lane. And finally, the first tower the goes down. Yeah, first tower goes down in the barrel lane. Unfortunately, Josh does get caught out. Do Doom is going to take the mid lane tower as well. And it's full steam ahead here for Kittens. Uh -oh, but it could be uh -oh. a catch though. Here comes Clue and Doom coming in to assist. Oh, the, Random's uh, still alive! Mr. Random. Random is still alive. Oh! I think he managed to get the kill, but it is a 2-1 trade so far. Can they make it a 3-1 trade? Nice status there on the set, but it was just delaying the inevitable. And then we have Yone. We have Gwen waiting around in that Shadow Clone, waiting for him to come back. But he just did not survive that comeback there. So mid turret gone, Baron turret gone. A 4-1 to trade all around that mid lane. And they Rift Herald's up. They just need to go for it. Ah, this is absolutely insane. I mean, this has got turned from bad to worse now for MB. They already lost the first series, the first game of this series, and it looks like this second game as well is going to go in the hands of Kittens. Kittens just outplaying in every single lane right now. It doesn't look like there is nothing that uh, MB can do about it. Don going to try the two versus ooh, one. Ooh. Not too sure if he's going to be able to. He's actually going back in and just auto a bunch. He's getting the healing as well. <laughs> Don with the one versus it. two. Oh, it's it's so hard. Hard. <laughs> oh my god. He still managed god, to get a one-one trade though. 
Oh, beautiful. That was absolutely insane. He went back in and started auto attacking again and again. And Don, again with the one versus two outplay, Don is showing up huge in this series. Absolutely a menace to society, Don, right now. He's just master of the 2v1s currently. Um, he's definitely showing why he's one of the best in EU right now. I mean, being able to have the absolute goal of that the, the Gwen play, also just going down with health, but then getting the health back, going back with the oil attacks, at least trading a 1v1 in the 2v1 situation. It's just brilliant. Oh. Oh, Andre said is go. caught as well. It looks like Hexley might be caught as well. This is looking really, really bad. Saying that, Necros does get a trade kill here. Oh, yeah. Does get a trade kill back. Doom is on the back line, though, trying to throw out the bombs, trying to do enough damage. He's going to do enough, though, Ooh. but Don is here. He's going to wait Hestes for Hexley to come back up. Yeah, he's gone. He is completely gone. Clue. We'll just use it as a distraction in the end, but another tower goes in the favor of team kittens and they are just yep, looking random, really good trying to run oh. down that baron lane as well we're getting help from clue and doom mm. here it's a uh, it's a bit of a rick's for <laughs> rick's re reunited in that top lane to come and help his teammates but uh, there was no kills taken there but it was a great push though in the baron lane putting some more pressure on uh kitten still not actually losing a turret right now they're all pretty low it wouldn't surprise me if you get to the point in the game where the, uh, I mean, it's only 11 minutes, so it would surprise me if you got to that point, because, I mean, the domination right now, uh, 6 to seven, 17 kills, uh, 7k goal difference, 8k now, um, 4 turrets difference, 2 dragons. Uh, if we get to the part where the turrets start taking burn damage, I think that's the only time we're going to see Kitten probably lose a turret right now. <laughs> if we ever get to that point of the game, I think, no, we're not even going to get to that point in the game at this stage. I mean, Kitten's are playing so, so cleanly, whether it's Don with the one versus two outplays random as well doom with this insane backline damage clue with the playmaking and vex as well he's gonna find lonely kid in that bush lonely kid against four members of oh, team kittens dude. yeah it's just completely gone i mean mv are gonna try and take a trade back in terms of tower maybe take their first tower of the game which they did in the bot lane don is actually yeah. trading and actually winning the one versus two again in the bot lane what can don not do in this series uses a ghost to get away jumps back onto the jash oh, oh. exhaust gets oh, used clue the uses the ulti as well don is trying to stay alive he's trying his best he's running away but eventually he does fall and the rest of mb are there to back up jash to protect them and duke could also be caught but look in the baron lane as well mm -hmm. the rift herald's gone down in the baron lane both random and vex are pushing in on this inhibitor tower but mb they're not gonna go Ooh. back they're just still gonna carry on fighting Yep, so we're seeing a great distraction there from the Vex and Random there in that uh, Baron Lane, but they still managed to keep hold of the Baron Lane inhibitor, which is impressive. The fact that we saw Clue and Doom actually hold off uh, three-fifths of the team as well in that mid lane, uh, and they still hold on to that Baron Lane inhibitor just about is impressive for MB at this point in the game. They've actually clawed back an 8K gold difference to 4K gold difference, which is, again, a great feat, which puts them back in the game. They are uh, back on the saddle again. They just need to get another good team fight, uh, maybe get the Baron Nasha. But as always, if the fight does keep going and we get that Elder Dragon, it is win condition Elder Dragon again. <laughs> Oh god, this game, this series is everything I wanted and more. It's it's so intense, it's so crazy. You can see the both these teams are putting everything on the line in this series to try and be crowned the season one champions of Rift Legends. And the big thing you mentioned was definitely that dragon with the ocean dragon probably gonna be coming up soon, maybe within the next minute or so. Random, keep putting the pressure down in bot lane. There you go. 30 seconds until that dragon spawns. It's going to be su such a big objective for MB to take. MB need to take this dragon. And Clue could be caught here. Doom's actually the one that's caught Ooh. out. Ooh. And that's a big uh -oh. pick up for MB. These aren't the little mistakes we need from kittens right now. Kittens were actually ahead of the game. They're slowly slipping away with these uh, mistakes from Clue here in their uh, own jungle deck being caught out. Down goes the second tier uh, it, uh, turret there for the mid lane, leaving that inhibitor wide open as well. So, oh, they're going to try it again. Win. Josh, what are you doing? 
<laughs> Dobin in the back line waiting for a pincer movement Monica from the Renekton as well. from the set. I, I, I feel like it's just desperation plays already for MB. Like, mm. they didn't need to go for this crazy flash plays. Yes, you put the members low on health, but Doom has teleport. Doom is going to get back into this fight with teleport. They're going to try and get the catch. Vex oh, goes in, but the, but the ulti from Heste. Yep, so he's split in. The, they wanted to go in. They status, but Heste takes uh, them out of the team fight once again. But down goes Lonely Kid as well. So there goes the Vi. It's currently a... 1-1 one, one trade, 2-1 two, trade from uh, Vex here on the Vi getting a double kill. And then we see a, uh, it's it's a 4v3. What can they do? They need this dragon. Uh, Gwen has decided to go around and put some pressure on this mid lane, which is a great shout, to be honest. We see the Yone build the teleport for in time when he comes back. But we're seeing Don run down this uh, mid lane right now to take an inhibitor, forcing somebody to recall right now. Because if they don't, they lose an inhibitor and they could possibly lose the dragon as well. But they, still, they no one's calling back. Game. No one's calling back. <laughs> I mean, if I even just lose the game, Don's just going to finish go. the game here. There's nothing that they can do. And Don wins the game for Kittens <laughs> in game number two. He's like, I don't give a damn about the team fight. I have the mid lane wave pushed in. And he just uses a backdoor. The XBK special happens in Wild Rift. I mean, I, it comes back to kind of my point of what I was saying in game number one. Kittens do so well at getting lane priorities. They get the ways pushed in every single time. And MB are going for these desperate team fights, not keeping an eye on their minion ways. And as you mentioned, you know, during that play, MB needed to take that dragon because if they don't take that dragon, then that's going to be three dragons over to Kittens. And that's pretty much a guaranteed win for them. But Don's just like, okay, you're just going to distract them a dragon. I'm just going to end the game through mid lane. And once again, Don is just carries kittens on the back of his shoulders. And we get into a game number two. My God, this series has everything. Yeah, that was mental. But I mean, it was a prior. If they didn't take it, it would mean it just separates the good from the bad. But kittens being the, uh, the epitome of both. Uh, formulation gg and uh formulation uh, games and obviously rick's gg as well it's just like those these are teams that used to throw back and forth wins and victories of tournaments as well so they're gonna take the trade secrets from what enabled them to win and and rick's uh, the three members of rick's are gonna give them that and then not only that they have kirk's as their uh, coach as well unfortunately it is not enough at the moment as it seems like it comes down to the gameplay of these two teams and just the outplay potential um that kittens have brought out in these first two games yeah definitely it's all about this draft to be honest um i mean what can they do in terms of ban right now because we saw Don on the Fiora 2v1 in. We saw him on the Gwen 2v1 in. We saw Random go on the Fiora as well as the Wukong. It's just, there's a lot of pool, a uh, champion pool there for all these players right now. And it's just hard to precisely ban every one of these top tier picks that kittens aren't picking and then going for the priority. But once again, we're seeing MB on the blue side following the suit of final poggers, just constantly staying on that blue side. And then Kittens are getting those two first pick priorities as well. So, uh, yes, it can hinder it. But at the same time, it's definitely working out in the favor of the red side right now. Yeah, and it just seems like MB at the moment are just banning away the champions of like, okay, you picked Gwen last game. Cool, we're going to ban away the Gwen. You picked Wukong and Morgana last game. Cool, we're going to ban them away. It just doesn't seem like MB have any sort of real strategy or anything at the moment um, in, this, in this draft phase. And... You know, Team Kittens, they're okay with it. They're just going for the exact same bands they have done time and time again. And they're just like, okay, what are you going to first pick? And then we're going to go all the way back now into a Ziggs verse pick for Jash in the duo lane. Taking that away from Doom. We saw this in the previous series, but look, you left the Wukong open. You left the Morgana open. You still got Aatrox as well. Wukong on random. You know, we already saw how much he popped off in game number one. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it is a battle for that Ziggs. I mean, we saw it a lot yesterday. It was uh, Ziggs or go home, it seems, especially with the Camille off of the cards as well. Uh, it was either go for the Ziggs, go for Camille, or but today we're seeing a heavy ban on Camille. Uh, Shen being banned as well. 
Uh, and then we're not seeing Gragas coming out in this series so far. We saw the Gwen slip through the net last time. And then Yone, but Yone didn't actually do too well within that one. They do manage to lock in the Fiora once again. Um, but like I said before, if it's not broke, don't fix it. They are looking to steal that Galio pick from Kittens, though. Yeah, not prioritizing Nautilus this time around. There's nothing at all that they're doing for this Nautilus. You know, Heste hasn't really been performing too well on this Nautilus for the first couple of games. Um, so they're just like, cool. We're not going to prioritize the Nautilus anymore. We're going to stick you on the Galio instead, which does leave it open for Kittens. So Clue can take that away as their third pick if they want to. But I think Galio is a pretty good pick, especially when you have the Ziggs. And there's the Jace that has been banned away a few times. And obviously we saw in the first year, he's not banned or picked really at all. But now Jace is finally going to be picked up here for MB. And as I already said, with Nautilus open, probably going to go in the hands of Kittens with Clue. And there we go. Yep, so we're seeing not a little swap hands here. Jay's actually coming through as well. So the first time in the entire of the day is Jay's coming out to play. So let's see what they can do with that Jay's pick. Uh, we're seeing that duo lane already been filled out there. And we've seen the Wukong and the Fiora, both of these champs interchangeable within the jungle or the um, Baron lane with some Fiora in the mid as well. We could see it against the Jace. Uh, but let's see what else is going to be banned here. So Zed once again, Yasuo once again. Uh, it looks like they're banning out some mid lane picks. You know, both teams again banning out mid laners. This is kind of a a story of this series really at the moment. But the thing is, is that Don can play Wukong mid. Don can play Fiora mid as well. We don't really know where this Jace is going. Most likely this Jace is going to go in the... Um, in the mid lane for Nacrez. Uh, I'm not really too sure where else it's going to go, but just in case they're banning away the uh, Zed anyway, this could actually go in the hands of Andre Zed. Uh, it could be, could be Jace Jungle, which I believe we saw yesterday, if I'm not we mistaken. Did. I think we saw Andre Zed take Jace in the jungle. So there is still that little bit of flexibility there. So I'm not surprised, I guess, that the Zed and the Jax get taken away. Oh, are we going to oh. see Seraphim come oh. out for Doom as well? chat called it if that's the case chat did call it um but yeah i mean we saw um andres on the jace yesterday and it was actually his best performance in the jungle as well so maybe this jace pick is going to be the jungle pick this time around for andres but um yeah i mean it was his best performance yesterday so we could see a maybe we could see a difference in mb right now Yep, it's going to be the Riven instead. So they have their whole top side available to them. Um, they do have a lot of flexibility, I think, with their top side. You know, Wukong can go in all three lanes. Fiora can go in all three lanes. Riven can go in all three lanes, whether it's top, mid, or jungle. There's so many different lanes that this uh, these champions can go. So it's so difficult on the side of MB to actually draft against Kittens because you have no idea where any of these champions are going to go. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a flex pick here. We've got the Olaf. We haven't seen Olaf since, I don't know, final day, maybe final few days of group stages. But Olaf has come to play with the Jace as well. We're seeing a uh, big old, big old change up here for MB. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of different champions on the side of MB. I mean, they've gone for a completely different team comp. Looks like Renekton is going to stay maybe for Lonely Kid. Uh, I don't want to see the old... Uh, I don't want to see the Garen. Garen is going to be picked up for Lonely Kid in a Baron lane. I don't really like to see it. I'm, I'm, I want to see... I mean, unfortunately, our Lonely Kid has not had the best of series. I mean, Random has completely stomped Lonely Kid in this series so far. That first game, he didn't really perform too well on the Garen. That second game on Renekton as well was not really the best. Um, so I think it's... Um, I guess it's kind of just a safe option really here because if he realizes that he's just in a losing matchup in the Baron lane, just go for something safe like a Garen, just farm up and just hopefully you can perform better. But Corky is going to be the pick here for Doom down in the dual lane and AD carry, well, kind of AD carry for Doom down in the dual lane uh, for this potential third and final game for Kittens. And it's, well, we got two yep. different kind of comps though, really, to be fair. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a very, uh, very CQC of uh, kittens in this one. We've got the Riven, we've got the Fiora, we've got Wukong, and we've got Nautilus as well. And then we've got uh, Doom on the Corky. Uh, we were expecting maybe a Seraphim. Maybe the utility of the Seraphim could be a great pick here. But they've definitely put the faith into the Corky pick here. Um, I'm not too sure if we saw Random play the um, 
No, we didn't. We did see him play Corky yesterday because he picked Woo. Um, not right, Woo, sorry. He did pick the Woo. It did because you love that. And he had Ziggs twice as well. Um, so this time around, we're actually seeing him pick the Corky. So let's see what Doom can do with the Corky. Yep, I mean, Doom went to, like I said, there's like a like a graph with a, with dual lane picks. You got the mages, which are in the middle. You have the Corky's like in the middle of like being Pog and okay. He's like in the middle. He's like kind of Pog, like an ADC Pog. He's kind of a mage at the same time. And then he went all the way down the tier list. He went all the way down into the depths of bruises in the dual lane with the Wukong yesterday, which I never want to see ever again. Um, but hey ho, we might might see it in this series. But if we do want to see it in this series, we do have to see MB taking this third game because if Kittens take this third game, we will see another 3-0 sweep in this grand finals day of rift legends season one so buckle up everyone we're in for another bumpy ride here in a rift legends grand final mb versus team kittens game number three let us know in chat who you think is going to come out on top and who won in terms of the draft and who you think is going to win this series yeah there seems to be a bit of a uh torn about the draft here for both of the teams it seems nobody uh there's a bit of back and forth between people disagreeing agreeing on the draft of both of these teams uh but it's only going to be time will tell we're seeing a 2v1 in the baron lane uh nautilus coming back up to that baron lane he was there for a second helping out uh the fiora going trying to get an early kill on the jace it seems they may be trying to like catch out the mid laner uh nakra's there because we haven't seen the support go anywhere else but the baron lane but they are back at it back at the meta play style whilst the corky and the zigs do their thing in the baron uh the dual lane Yeah, they're going to be sticking to what they know and what they love right now in this competitive meta with supports up in the baron lane don't really like to see it but sometimes it's not really much you could do or oh, random actually gets caught out he they goes a lot of yeah he jumps in and plays a little bit too aggressive there but he does have the fruit that he can go back and take if he wants to which he does a little bit of an over aggressive trade there from random jumping in especially against the galio it's very very difficult because galio can just use this taunt take reduced damage and taunt the galio which can be pretty annoying to deal with um but for now yeah. they're both just trading up in the baron lane yeah we're unfortunately back to that uh ballroom baron lane bash up that we saw in the first match not quite what we were seeing in the second game where we were seeing first blood within 40 seconds it's back to wukong and garen just trading blows uh with the support nice little uh package in there from uh corky uh, from uh zig sorry bringing the order into him can they they try and flash and get the damage onto the corky but just not quite doing enough damage in that early game secure the kill on Corky. There's a really nice satchel charge actually from Josh actually mm. knocks Corky into tower range and Doom actually took a tower shot and he thought that he can maybe flash forward and take that kill. Unfortunately not. Yeah. Vex is looking for a play in bot side. I'm not too sure. Hey, he's actually going to go in the bot lane we can see on the mini map but Josh is able to use that satchel charge to get away to safety so Vex kind of wasting a little bit of time for now. Both players looking or both teams looking to try and make plays in these side lanes but nothing is going to come of it just yet yeah it's all about i don't know it's just it's just a plenty of lot of trading blows no matter what lane we're looking at right now and like you say riven is taking some very vital time away from himself from farming to try and get a sneak in on that duo lane there but not actually doing anything with it so that comes at a cost for uh, Vex right now, but he's back straight at the grind in here. We see that uh, Hestis gets caught out in their jungle. He tries to use the vision there on the on Team Kittens to try and do something to find out where they are, but gets caught out, takes a lot of damage. We're seeing Clue still quite close by, uh, but Galio being able to manage to recall under the turret. A little bit risky there, to be honest with you. I <laughs> I, I thought that Heste was going to get caught. I thought the ultimate was going to get used by Clue as well. But maybe saving that for a Im more important fight, which is going to be these objectives that are going to be coming up Ooh. very, very soon. Oh, random. random. Uses the Cyclone and uses the Clone away to get to safety. So really, really well played there. Clue actually dashing in, using the hook to go in. Realizes that Vex is just behind him. Uses it as just a distraction. 
but nothing comes off of it again. I feel like this early game, both these teams are playing very cautiously. They're going for these short trades, but nothing too crazy in terms of full engages just yet, as we might be waiting another five minutes again, Blam, for our first uh, first um, first kill of the game. That's it. It's, it's a roller coaster of emotions and tempo. First match, we was all the way down low. And then it was, oh, on the second match. And then it's, oh, back down <laughs> like this on the third match. Uh, 27 seconds for both the jungle objectives. Once again, it was around this time we started to see the first blood uh, in the first match again. So will we see Kittens beeline for the Infernal? Or will we see a contest this time for the Infernal, Drake? Yeah, I, in terms of early game comps, I mean, obviously, uh, Team Kittens do have the package from Corky, which does give them give them a pretty big advantage. I'm trying to think in terms of early game comps, like what these teams want to do and how they're going to actually um, be able to take these first objectives or what they're going to prioritize. I think the big thing is at the moment, that Andre Zed has not completed his first item, so he doesn't have Divine Thunder completed, which is a pretty big pickup. Heste does not have Flash available still. He could nope. get caught here. Oh, there we go. But yeah, status, status keeping him from that. Uh, but just delaying the inevitable. And then Kittens get the first blood on the Galio. So status nullifying that damage from the Ziggs. But we see the Jays going here. Jays could actually do some damage here. But there is a status from Clue right now. Uh, but then we see the Fiora. So uh, Don going back oh. in there. But lonely kill with the kill there. So a 1 1 trade. Well, it's 2 1 technically. But Galio is back up. Uh, but Lonely Kid coming in there to get the first kill for MB, taking some unnatural, unnecessary hits from the turret there, hoping to catch Dooms, but uh, Doom managed to get away safely. Overall, pretty good trade for Kittens. They'll take the first objective. They'll take the three kills that they got. Ian Heste walking up a bit too far, to be honest with Ooh. you, especially with uh, Heste not having flash because he actually blew his flash beforehand by getting caught out. Random could get solo Random killed here close. by Ooh. the barrier, the minions. Oh. There we go. Lonely Kid keeps it. He got that kill. I think uh, Random took a lot of it. Too much damage there before going in. I mean, obviously, Wukong can heal on hit there. But it just wasn't enough heal to go against the Garen, especially with the Silence as well. Lonely Kid lucky to take this first turret as they try and get the Rift Herald. It could be a loss oh, here. Stolen. Yes, Blue Team have stolen it. It's stolen away. The Rift Herald and MB are looking to come out on top in this third game. The Ziggs Bomb in the end takes out Clue. Lonely Kid takes the first tower in bot lane as well. And this is looking pretty good for MB. They have a 3,000 gold lead now coming into this mid game. Rift Herald is going to be used in mid lane. They're going to take another tower in this mid lane as well. And potentially even take the top lane tower. Look at this. Nacris is already up oh there. Oh my God. There's going to be three towers and three three towers in quick succession here for mb accelerates the gold Ooh. lead for them Ooh. who is if they if they change players by any chance this is just different that three consecutive towers all in a row it's just like lining them up like glass balls and shooting them down uh jace with the demolished damage towards the end with the um the help of Hallbreaker as well really took down that turret very quick in the Baron lane before they could even respond on the side of Kitten. So Kittens have got to be very careful now. The uh, MB have exhausted the Rift Herald right now, but uh, Kittens have got that first uh, Dragon also. So they just need to prioritize the lanes a little bit. Maybe not try and force as many 2v1s, 1v1s or anything like that. They just need to focus farm and get these lanes uh, nailed down. Yeah, I think the kittens have a pretty good scaling comp anyway. You know, you got the corky that's scaling up, getting a few items. You have the Fiora as well. So they have a really good, uh, decent scaling comp here for kittens. So even though they're behind in this early game, I still think they'll be okay with it with that first dragon also being taken. MB done really, really well to steal away that Rift Herald to take the advantage mm -hmm. in terms of the kills. A 1v1 kill for Lonely Kid down in that bot lane as well means that he is now 2 and 0. Oh, look at that goal lead in the barrel lane. 2,000 goal lead for Lonely Kid. He's definitely turned things around after the first two games. That's it. Yeah, it seems like Lonely Kid's waking up a little bit. He's like, right, okay, I need to turn on that. Um that giga chad switch for the baron lane and he's definitely done it uh it's definitely activated this time because of that 2k gold difference there in the baron lane um but once again it's just 
MB have sort of started this match up a lot better. We've seen a very stalemate at the beginning of it, but then those three consecutive towers fall. They get the 4k gold difference as well. Uh, it's going to be harder for Kittens to retreat anytime soon when it comes to these early fights now. It just comes down to now what Kittens are going to do to try and make sure this goalie doesn't accelerate too much into MB's favor. Uh, if it does, then it's going to be really difficult for them to come back. I think they just need to slow down the game a little bit. The big thing for Kittens now is they can just play passive. There's no objectives up for a long amount of time. You've lost all your three outer towers. Just stay safe. Just play passive. Make sure you take these minion waves that are crashing into your towers and maybe look for a bit of a trade later on, but... Looks like MB just won a fight. Ooh. My God, lonely kids. <laughs> there we go. I mean, he is doing what he needs to do. He has been fed with the gold. It's that 2K difference. When you have a Garen at that advantage, it's just going to be a lot harder for the enemy team right now. Uh, Nakra is missing out on that snipe. That would have been a nice amount of damage onto Doom there, but just missing out the snipes. But yeah, Garen is definitely a force to uh, be reckoned with right now with that goal lead in the Baron lane. My God, he has so much gold. It's absolutely insane, Nakrez. Needs to be a little bit careful. The package does come up now. This second dragon is going to be pretty huge here on the side of Kittens. If they can steal this one away, they can look towards that three dragon win condition. But the problem is right now, they have no vision around this objective at all. They don't know what they're walking into. Random needs to be so, so careful. Look at the damage. Oof. Yeah, you've got to be careful with that Garen damage there. We're seeing a bit of an engage from oh the Oh my god. Taking a bit of damage there, but uh, Doom having to be forced out of the team fight. All that damage. There goes the Nautilus from Ziggs as well. We're looking for another kill. On the Fiora, nice snipe there from the Jace. Jace does still have the flash. He has the Ignite, but he's this forced. He's changed his mind. He's going back. He's going to go and help with that Ocean Drake. And Ocean Drake has been secured by MB. This is their first dragon for the last three games. Yeah, really, really a good play there from MB. Just using their vision control to perfection. Just saying to, uh, saying to Kit, it's like, cool, you come towards us. Us, we have a Ziggs. We have a Garen in the front line with the Olaf. We can give this Ziggs enough space to just throw bombs, to just use it as a zoning control uh, zoning control tool to be able to just deal enough damage and just stop Kittens from being able to do anything. You can see Doom there. He tried to jump into the fight. He was waiting for to use his package. He had to use his package and his Valkyrie defensively and was not in the fight at all. He just took so much damage from the Ziggs bombs and also from the Meteor Enchant from Garen. That he just wasn't in the fight the whole time and it just gives them be the advantage. Definitely, definitely. It's, I mean, it, this could easily be the first win for MB within the series. Uh, it's definitely looking that way right now. They've got the 6k gold difference. They've, they've only got three kills ahead, but it's that gold difference that's going to make all of the uh, odds against that a win right now. Um, I think that maybe that they're starting to question the Ziggs pick. Uh, not the Ziggs pick, sorry, the Corky pick right now. The Ziggs pick is definitely aiding uh, MB right now in this victory. Uh, Meteor Strike coming in there, but completely misses on uh, the side. Oh, this game is looking pretty good for MB. This is so tense. Oh, Very no, good. Doom. Oh, God. Doom nearly got caught out there. Had to use his flash to get away. Looks like MB are That's using it. their aggression at the moment. The Rift Herald goes down in the bot lane. I'm not too sure if this is going to crash, though. Or oh, it does actually Ooh, crash in the end. Yeah. Managing to connect that Rift Herald to the second tier turret in that dual lane just helps them get that little bit more gold. There seems to be a 1v1 here. Lonely Kid oh, against oh, oh, oh. Don, but it's just that gold difference. Garen is now fed. He is 4 0. He is literally 3k ahead of most of these lanes as well. So Lonely Kid's really put himself in a good position with this Garen pick this time around. So it's going to be hard for Kittens to try and win this one. I think this is a solidified win for MB in this match. Yeah, they played so well in this game around the objectives, around the team fight, around their vision. Vex is going to try and kill Necris here, but it's so difficult to try and kill a Jace that has Holebreaker and even the Galio ulti that comes through as well. Yeah, win condition clearly is that Galio with the Ziggs. As soon as that switched hands, MB has definitely stacked up their plays. The gold difference, even got a dragon, got a few jungle objectives as well. 
Um, I don't think the Olaf's playing as much as a key part in this. It is definitely the Ziggs and the Galio, and then also getting Lonely uh, Kid. That lead in the Baron lane is also going to help them with this match. So, yeah, it's definitely looking. It's <laughs> like chat said, it's Ziggs. Uh, whoever gets Ziggs wins currently in this series, it seems. Wasn't the case in the previous series, though, with Final Pockets yeah. being uh, taking the Ziggs a few times and wasn't enough for them. But uh, again, I think when teams pick Ziggs, every time the Ziggs gets picked, you have to think of ways to be able to get onto the Ziggs. Because if you leave the Ziggs alone, then the Ziggs will easily just be able to do as much damage as he wants and you, you can't do anything about it. You know, I think Earthrog did, uh, Earthrog did very, very well in um, the previous series realizing that against the ziggs you need something that you can jump and get onto the back line which i really is the perfect champion for that saying that don could be in a little bit of trouble here <clears throat> yeah we used to see him with the two v1s but when you're out golded and you have a garen with that fantastic uh, j uh ziggs all from uh, jesh there getting the kill and then status from the galio it's just, it's, I think it's a slow trickle victory here for MB. They're looking just for a way into those inhibitors. A split lane push. But I think as soon as they get another double kill, triple kill in the next fight, I think they'll just force this uh, Baron Dasha oh. fight right now. They've taken out the ward. They're going for Baron. It's a very risky Baron though, because you can mm. see that the members of uh, MB are still quite not that healthy. And there is a little bit of poke damage as well from Corky. Yeah. They're going to back away for now. I think this is way too risky for MB to try and do this. But MB have done very, very well to just extend that gold lead ever so slowly across this game. Getting a few picks in the side lanes, whether it be with Lonely Kid getting the solo kill, Nakrez and Heste getting a pick onto uh, Don in the bot side as well. They've done very, very well. The next dragon is going to be spawning in a few seconds time. I don't think Kitsons want to contest this at all. I think they're just going to go back to farming and just do what they can. Yeah, they're not going to contest it. It's not triple Drake. It's not the end of the world. It is a bit of a problem because it is Infernal plus Mountain Drake, which are two of the strongest Drakes right now. But it does mean that Kittens can get a little bit of uh, jungle priority and a, a little bit of vision control around this Baron buff to make sure MB can't take it away. But a free Baron and Dragon and oh, Don might be caught again here. Yep, we do have random oh, in the bush Chris. there. Can they get the kill? Oh, Nakris does the status, but random is staying in there. Fiora gets the kill, but then Lonely Kid comes in, slam dunks the Fiora. Here comes Galio, so Hest is here with the support. Yes, they managed to get a kill, but that minion wave in mid is doing some damage to that Baron lane. Uh, the mid wave's turret, sorry. Uh, um, getting all confused now. It's all popping off. It's getting super heated in here as well. The fact that MB could turn this around also. But uh, literally, commendment to MB right now. They haven't tilted. Even though it's a 2-0 victory, they are still in it to win it. Oh, it's nearly, nearly really well played by Kittens and by Random in this bot side because they were using Don, Don as kind of a distraction in a way and Random was kind of waiting in the bush. They did trade one for one, so it's a pretty decent trade on the side of Team uh, team Kittens. It means that they can't really, uh, MB can't really pressure and try and take down these inhibitor towers. There is a tower that's going to be going in the hands of Random down in this bot lane, but we only have about two minutes left until this Elder Drake spawns. And I hate to say it, but it just... It, it seems like kittens don't really have a way to get get back into this game they have to try and find yep. one team fight one one pick or something to get back into this game because at the moment mb has such a huge goal lead and there's so many strong items on all their carries it's just so difficult to do anything as andres is going to use his ultimate to make sure that he's not caught by any crowd control i think that's pretty decent for him to just use that it's going to be a bit of a trade. That's There's it, a yep, flank so as well from Lonely Kids. Yep. Lonely Kid coming around. Taking a lot of damage though there. Uh, we could we see Random. Random with the kill onto Lonely Kid. Can he get it? He has Cyclone. He has status. But Lonely Kid is getting out of there. Oh, they have random. no way back in. <gasps> Olaf is down as well. And here we go. Random takes out the Garen. So it's a currently a 2-0 trade. Is this what Kitten needs to turn it around? This is their 8-mile moment. 
Wait, the hook as well. Oh, Necros with the stasis. But this could be huge for Kittens. This Beautiful. could turn around for them. Heste with the taunt as well. Okay. The Ziggs does so much damage in the back line. Another stasis from Heste. He's going to do try and try and do enough to survive here. Doom has Ooh. the Rift Maker stacked up. He's doing the damage. He's doing all he can. The rocket Ooh. comes through, but just misses out. The bomb as well gets flashed away from Doom. This game is going down to millimeters. But again, random on this Wukong. I thought Lonely Kid was the one with the flank, but it was actually random the one that was flanking Lonely Kid in the end. And I think Andre Zed tried to go for the kill onto Doom in the back line, but then just completely got isolated. So it was actually a two for O trade for Kittens. Yep, that was a, it's definitely what they needed to put themselves back into the pace here. Uh, but we're seeing that Elder Dragon. So we always say it. it's clearly our favorite statement, Shu, but it is definitely Elder Dragon win condition right now. Uh, 15 seconds on the Elder Dragon. Uh, what can uh, Kittens do here to try and find a way in to relieve the pressure so they can actually get in onto this dragon? We're seeing that mid lane being pushed by the minions, but we're also seeing Don rotating around to that Baron lane to try and push, get some uh, essence of domination in that baron lane whilst they go for the elder dragon because once they get elder dragon you don't want to be caught in that team fight and he's be so so careful here but you can see the split push coming through again for don you can see don up in this bot side the flash in from heste doom is Ooh. dead and they're gonna try and do all they can to try and secure this elder dragon the tp here comes in go. from Don's don in. instead andre oh, said oh. taken very very low though the stasis comes through from andre said they're going on to josh josh with the stasis as well nb are doing it they're gonna take this elder dragon they're potentially oh. gonna take this game clue tries to do all he can to stay this elder drake and he's not gonna be able to the bot top lane inhibitor drops but i don't think it's Ooh. going to be enough mb look at that minion the minions wave. are pushing the base i still don't think it's going to do enough yet the members of mb are going to be back but what an insane engage from heste in the end completely crowd controls doom he couldn't use anything to survive there and mb get a huge team fight Definitely, definitely huge team fight. I, I think Don should have teleported in there. Maybe Don should have just committed to that lane because, I mean, River managed to get it alive, but Don went in there and died. They, they oh. didn't really get a, They didn't really get much of a trade there. They, yes, they took out Hesties there, but, I mean, it, in this late stage right now, with the Baron, with the Elder Dragon, uh, Hesties is the least of your problems with that Elder Dragon buff right now. And so difficult in them situations to try and make the right decisions. You know, should Don TP? Should Don have just stayed there and maybe pushed into the base? It's so difficult. These players have so much pressure right now on the back of them, especially for the side of MB. Kittens still have a few lifelines left. Even if they lose this game, they can try and do their best to try and close out the series in the next game or maybe even the game afterwards if we go to game number five. But Elder Dragon is now in... Uh, Elder Dragon and Baron is in the side hands of MB. But Don, he's actually just going to stop the wave completely in this mid lane. He actually kind of just cancels it out. He just stops the, the uh, minion wave from pushing in. But look at this Baron lane wave though. There's a huge top lane wave. But look, Dawn oh, again gosh. in this bot lane. If MB can if MB can maybe finish this game, I'm not too sure. The Elder Drake damage is so strong though. Look at that. I don't think Just Don's gonna be able to end the game in time. Um it was actually Nakris that went back to the base as well. The Elder Drake, the Baron, I think, is way too strong. And MB are looking to try and close out this game. Definitely, yeah. So Jace goes back there to stop that push from Fiora. And they go straight for the Nexus. And MB get their first victory in the series. So it's not going to be a solid 3-0. Which we're all hoping for. Which we all predicted anyway. But MB clapped back with that uh, single match victory there. Uh, but I mean, the, the fact of the Ziggs, the Galio, but also unleashing the Jace for the first time today is probably the issue of the matter. The matter of the issue is that Jace and obviously Lonely Kid being fed on the Garrett oh, as yeah. well. So massive draft, but also being able to prioritize a Lonely Kid getting fed is going to be an issue for Kittens anyway. So... Yes, we weren't too happy about the Garen pick. We know it's a boring Baron matchup, but it clearly served the purpose for MB. Yeah, and the six verse pick as well. Look at Josh's damage. 58,000 damage 
on the zigs. I mean, Kittens didn't really have any way to get onto the zigs in the back line. There was not really much that they could have done in the end. It's it's so worry worrisome for the side of uh, Kittens when it comes to this uh, this next game. They want to try. They're gonna have to try and prioritize this zigs pick and try and take this away uh, from the side of MB. But look at this game. So back and forth. Another twenty plus minute game. Elder Drake's Baron's potential backdoors for Dom. Should he have stayed? Should he have TP'd? We're not going to find out if he was able to finish the game if he stayed. But I think one big pick that we're going to have to talk about uh, in this series in general is that Ziggs. Obviously, that you were mentioning already. I think the Ziggs has been such a big uh, priority uh, for the side of... Um, for, for you know, for both these teams and for all of these teams, really, to make sure that they're able to um you know be able to get the bomber man himself and deal enough damage yep so we are into the draft uh they are banning the akali once again they don't want to see the lonely kid that we saw yesterday being on the akali and they don't want to see nakras play the akali as well so uh it seems like a solid first ban for kittens there um but yeah, it's a little bit interesting. The Akali first ban is a little bit different this time around. It's no Shen, no Gragas. There's the Gragas. There we go for MB. Uh, Shen will definitely appear. I at least hope so he would appear in this, unless they are deciding to unleash Shen because we haven't had him all in the playoffs. But there he goes, back in the naughty corner with you, Shen. Yeah, back in the ban list, unfortunately, for Shen. I mean, by far, probably the best jungler at the moment, especially in competitive. A jungler that can just AFK farm and just do whatever the hell he wants in the jungle. And then all he has to do is press one button, press the ulti, and he joins the team fight. He gives one of your carries a huge massive shield. He joins the team fight, and he just negates all the aggression that Team MB or the, you know, the other side of Kittens could also uh, try and stop the aggression there if they were to pick Shen. But unfortunately, Shen wouldn't be able to find his way. And there is the Ziggs ban i was thinking will mb ban away the zigs to make sure it doesn't get first picks and it is going to be banned away so now this makes up for an interesting first pick the wukong is open the fiora is also open and that's going to be the first pick priority here for the side of kittens i knew it was going to be a spicy draft and it's already producing a lot of spice yeah, but it wouldn't be a kittens match without that uh, fiora we've seen it within the past three matches I can keep it consecutive it works it definitely has that 2v1 potential that we've seen from don there uh, whether it will go to don again is going to be interesting or will it go to random once again we aren't too sure but that jace is back in on the mix he has come from the naughty corner we didn't see him in the third placement match but we've seen him now twice in a row maybe this is the upset that we saw nakras actually did a really good job with him but we've seen andreas with him as well so interesting and we see that galio pick being insta locked once again but it did aid them a lot in that last match yeah i think the nakras did a really really great job on the jace uh, in the, the previous game had just brought a lot of pressure in the side lane you also have the galio as well which again was another really really strong pick on the side of mb two of their core components of that previous comp obviously they don't have the zigs from before uh, but they still do have the two strong components with the support and the mid laner potentially mid laner or the jungler here for mb Nautilus being picked up for Clue, obviously with the uh, Gragas being banned away, you have to pick up the Nautilus to make sure it doesn't get banned away. And what's going to be the third and final pick here? Do they potentially pick a jungler or a mid laner or maybe even a dual laner here? Oh, they might even deny away the Garum. They were like, yep, that Garum was super annoying. We don't want to deal with it anymore. It does look like that is going to go probably in the hands of Don. Um, you don't really see random on garen too much normally it's in the hands of don in the mid lane but we'll have to see what what happens there yeah i mean it's a bit of a, a good mix up there with the if jace goes mid lane instead then obviously garen with the jace is obviously a good matchup but then if it's somebody else in the mid lane uh but even then any assassin you got the garen garen's generally a decent pick we've seen him being picked quite a lot as a counter for the assassin types in that mid lane. Uh, but they do lock in the Corky. So they've lost the Ziggs. They decide to give Corky another shot. We saw Jash go 11-2 uh, yesterday on the Corky. So maybe this time around he will get that time to shine. Now, Foshi did lose in the game of number two. But 
He's going to be trying it again. Interesting enough, they're not banning out other duo laners, though, because with Ziggs already banned and Corky taken, you would have thought that maybe they would ban out other duo lane champions, like the Seraphine, maybe, like the Karma, like even the Morgana, but they actually prioritize and ban away the Kha'Zix instead, which the junglers are going to be banned away for both these teams so far the nautilus could go in the jungle though for vex we do have to remember that vex is a player that does play nautilus jungle quite a lot uh, we did see andres try and play it unfortunately it didn't really work out for him but vex always go for, goes for his full glass cannon full ap nautilus so i'm curious to see if he's actually going to be going for that with the olaf being banned it means that maybe we could be doing it and wukong as well so do decent ban away it bans away from the side of team kittens yeah, and obviously I was going to say maybe they would leave open that Varus pick, but no, he has been banned also. The last ban on the side of MB. So it's truly going to be an imaginative pick. I reckon maybe that uh, Seraphin also going to be in that uh, duo lane. We saw Dooms on him. It's a great pick, especially for the poke, being able to go one-on-one -on -one against the Corky. If Corky will be in that duo lane as well. Uh, but then also having the utility of the shield um, when it comes to team fights, And it <laughs> has been that pick that has tipped the scales and won quite a few team fights. For sure, I wouldn't be surprised if Doom picks it as well. Doom hasn't really prioritized the Morgana and Karma, more prioritizing the Seraphine over the two. And it will be the Seraphine. Ah, we finally get to see Seraphine oh, yeah. on Doom. <laughs> We finally get to see the Seraphine on uh, on Doom. Uh, really excited to see what he's going to bring out here. I think with the front line that um, that Kit Team Kittens are bringing with the Garen and Fiora, the shielding that Doom can offer with the Seraphine is going to be absolutely huge when it comes to these fights as well. And oh, baby. Ooh. Could we see a Yumi as well? Oh, we see the cat and Seraphine. Oh my God. That is so much healing and shielding on the side of, of, um, of Team Kittens. And my God, the cat has been unleashed. The kittens have picked the cat. And I'm very worried for MB. Oh yes, so yes. Yumi has gone full form with the kittens. This is their ultimate final form uh with the cat pick the only other pick that probably could have oh, got in with that darius. Cat pick is the renga but we're seeing a darius that's interesting oh it's probably gonna be darius for lonely kid in the baron lane i haven't seen darius picks in a very very long time because darius received a few nerfs and obviously the items have not really been too well for him mm. darius jungle for andre zed i thought it would probably be like gwen jungle instead but if this is darius jungle this is something completely different that we have not seen at all from any of the pro players. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to wait till the preparation phase goes into the last second. I think that may drop. I mean, we've seen, we saw at one point within ranked games, obviously, phase rushed Darius in the jungle. But yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if this is the place for him. I mean, I don't know how this pick is going to do. I mean, it's so difficult for this uh, for this Darius to even get to like a Seraphine, for example. I mean, he's going to do pretty well in terms of skirmishes, especially against the likes of Garen and Fiora. He can try and stack up his passive as much as possible. But with how much healing and shielding the side of Team Kittens have, I'm kind of worried for this Darius pick. I'm not too sure if this Darius pick is going to live up to its standard. I would like to see more Darius in the barrel lane or maybe Gwen in the jungle, but it is some different picks. We see uh, we see um, Yumi on one side. We see Darius jungle on the other side. This game is going to be super, super intense. And this could potentially be the last game as well. Where MB obviously have to win this game to take us to a game number five. So really excited to see how this goes. Yeah, I was going to hold off saying this could be the final game because I mean we could say this for the next game, so True. I'm just going to keep it. Just going to keep it without trying to tease people that it's going to be the last game. But yeah, some really interesting picks. But it's getting to that point within the competition now where the surprise picks need to come out, especially if it's something they've been holding back for the entire of the playoffs and the group stages. I don't think we've seen that Darius before in the jungle. No. It may switch hands towards the end. We don't know, but. To be fair, it's a surprise pick. Both quarters off guard. But then again, with all these bands coming out and all the picks already been taken up, there's only so much you can do. I mean, some people may, but may have wanted to see a Lee Sin. We don't really see Lee Sin in the competitive right now. But Darius may be the thing that pushes him to a 2-2 victory. 
Uh, I'm excited. I mean, like you said, it's if you have any of these pocket picks, if you have any of these picks that you've been holding back, the grand final is the perfect way to use it. You've got now. It's basically now or never. Uh, you've got one more series left here uh, for the side of for these two teams and. You know, Darius Jungle, I think, is going to be a very... I, I don't know how this Darius Jungle is going to work, though. I think the, you know, the likes of the Garand and the Fiora are going to be quite annoying to deal with. But I'm curious to see what actually happens here as we're going to be getting... Here we go into game number four here. T Team Kittens against MB. The cat has been unleashed. Everyone in chat go wild for Yumi. Yumi's going to win. Pog... Any Yumi enjoyers? Any cat enjoyers in chat? There's always cat enjoyers. Anybody that's not enjoying cats is a denier. But we need to give Yumi's the zoomies for kittens to get a win here. Uh, we've seen some some really aggressive plays there from the Yumi being uh, split apart from the Fiora right now. Yeah, I think the only struggle that Yumi is going to have in is is um, is in this two v two in the Baron lane. Yumi doesn't really do too much to um, kind of help with this these trades in the Baron lane. So I'm very curious to see how well they actually do. But they are against a Gwen and a Galio, so I don't think there's a lot of kill potential uh, for this Yumi in the Baron lane. I think Random can just take a few trades and just be fine as I say that. Oh, oh. Needs to be a little bit careful. Yeah. Random? Oh my god. Oh, oh. oh, 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 oh. I mean, that's the potential of this Gwen and uh, Galio in the Baron lane because, I mean, you could go in with Galio, get the knockup, and then just unleash those scissors. They can do a lot of damage, especially within the um, the early game, especially when you don't have many items to build against the uh, the magic resistance or anything like that. So this knockup and uh, scissor combo right now is do doing wonders for uh, MB right now. It's, it's definitely making the early game a little bit easier for them. Uh, Andreas is probably going to try and go for a tower dive there. Uh, Jace getting away in the mid lane also. So it's all very interesting. Um, I didn't think we'd see. Like you said, with the laning phase, with the Yumi, it's a bit questionable when it comes into the... As long as we don't feed or let Lonely Kid get ahead too far. Yeah. And they still utilize that Yumi within the team fights. I think it can still be a trump pick. Yeah, for sure. I think they just have to survive this early game. Like I said, Yumi's not going to do anything in the two versus two. Does have to be very careful because it kind of works as like a two versus one in a way because Yumi isn't really a champion in the early game. You just sit on random and just hope for the best. Saying that, random's going to be waiting here and maybe... Oh. oh, no, he's gone back. Random, <laughs> random, <laughs> random recalled a bit too early there, unfortunately. But you can see random even took ghost this game, which I think is very, very interesting. So I'm not going for the combat summoner spell like the barrier or the um or the ignite because you already have the barrier and the ignite on yumi so more going for a more utility with the ghost trying to maybe maneuver around during these team fights knowing that most of the time this yumi is going to be on the random uh, it's going to be on random because there's not really any other champions you can put this on heste does get Ooh, caught first, first blood loved by kittens onto hestes there so getting caught out there by the nautilus uh, and the Fiora with the Yumi as well. Um, and Garen was looking for a rotate round to try and support any more of a further team fight. But after getting that kill, Kittens for let's not be greedy. Let's disengage and let's just continue back to resetting into these lanes. That was really sneaky though from Vex. You can see what he did. He went into that tribe bush and he used the pink ward to make sure there was no vision. And Heste had no idea that um, Vex was sitting in that bush. Ulti comes out from the Yumi. Yep. Meow, Save meow. Get random there. The meows in chat. Any meow enjoyers? Meow. Yeah. Can you can you meow? Meow, meow. <laughs> <laughs> we're going crazy. What have we been crazy? What have we been reduced to, <laughs> Stu? This is what happens when we're into four games in. <laughs> <laughs> we're going crazy. It's already been a long, long day, but I mean, it could be an even longer day if this if MD wins his next game. It could be. Oh, we, could be we could be woofing like dogs in the next match <laughs> if it goes ahead. Hey, if there's a NASA's picked in the next game, I wouldn't mind. No, That's NASA's it, yeah. is basically a dog. <laughs> Old McDonald out of farm, but here we go. There's a bit of an engage going in from. Oh, oh nice. Lonely could get in the kill on random and then a knockup onto Clue. Will Clue make it out alive? No. 
There's just too much damage to contest there, too much CC, and a nice double kill for MB in that Baron lane. Yeah, random choosing to flash forward then, and then instead of flashing away, maybe thinking that he had enough damage there to kill off Lonely Kid. Unfortunately, didn't, and he actually risk his life and also the life of his cat as well so unfortunately himself and his cat just dies away and that's a big two kills though for lonely kid it's going to give him a huge goal lead he already has a thousand gold lead and this gwen is going to be a very very powerful pick and this is like i said was kind of the problem of the yumi that he doesn't really offer too much in the early game heste on this um on this gadio is going to be offering a lot more with the crowd control yeah, definitely. And as it gets in towards the mid to late game with that global ult, it's going to be a bit of an issue as well. We're seeing the kittens go for the rift hole. They secure it. And then we see MB go for Ocean Drake. So currently, um, in terms of this Darius pick, it's not really hindered them much. Um, he has gone for the phase rush though. So as we called it in the draft, so phase rush Darius in the jungle. Here comes Galio straight back onto okay. Lonely Kid to disengage that uh, 3v3. Yeah, Doom and Vex had to flash away there because they have to be careful of the uh, ultimate from uh, Heste being able to knock everyone up. Heste looking, pushing a little bit too, a little bit forward there, trying to get a few towers. Don. Okay, he's just going to stay underneath the tower for now. Maybe Don, uh, Andrew's going to hook over the wall, but yeah, nothing else happens there. But look at the goal lead already in the jungle. There's already a huge goal lead in the top lane. Um, for the side of Lonely Kid. But in the jungle, Vex is doing a pretty good job so far. The ultimate comes out. Vex needs to use the ultimate here of the Nautilus. Oh, don't want to go too far under the turret there. Even though you had the Fiora ultimate with the healing, I think the turret would have been a lot more punishing in that moment there. Even though there's two of them going in onto the Gwen. So I think it was a good time to retreat from that 2v1. Especially as the Galio was rotating around. Because if you get caught by that taunt under that turret, you are going to be paying for it. Yeah, for sure. Especially when Gwen uses Ghost as well. It's so difficult to try and catch up with the Gwen. You can see Don's not having the best of times here in the bot lane against Nakra. Saying that, he dodges yeah. away from the Shock Blast exp Acceleration yeah. Gate. Ooh. He has flash as well. He can look to flash forward. The barrier comes oh, through. Here we go. Nakra is going to survive for now. Oh. And the barrier just comes through in time. If the barrier didn't come through there from Nakra, he was probably dead. But really smart play there from Don. Unfortunately, not going to be able to get a kill though. Yeah, you know when you force Jace into a situation when he has to knock you back sort of thing. Whereas normally with the Jace, you can just apply that damage and just go in. But we saw Don actually get the upper hand there. Uh, we're going to see this Baron Lane turret fall as well. Oh, so Doom. first turret goes to them. Oh, yep, Doom. A little bit too in deep there. And it's a big early game for MB. They got the first power ready in the Baron. They look at that gold lead in the top lane right now. 2,000 gold lead for Lonely Kid. That big exchange in the early game. That big double kill. And Gwen nearly has two items at seven and a half minutes in this game. This is absolutely huge. And Random could be caught here. The dash, the torn, the parry comes out. But I'm not too sure if it's going to be enough. Random falls. And MB takes take it and take another kill and they are currently sitting at a juicy 4,000 gold lead and twitch chat we could be looking at potential game number five here in this series yeah so far it's definitely it's on the cards for mb to go for another match we're seeing a 4v2 almost taking place there looking to take a gank onto the lane but then decided against it but yeah, I think kittens just need to sort of like prioritize lane, maybe look out more for these ganks that seem to be taking place on the lanes. Uh, know that they're not safe under these turrets. They need to uh, find some sort of contingency in order to win back this early to mid game now. They are 4k gold difference from MB right now. They are down a turret, down a dragon. Uh, they managed to secure the Rift Herald. Um, popped it in the mid, but didn't quite take the turret. Yeah, I mean, the big question is going to be now, what is Lonely Kid going to do with this gold lead? I really hope to see Lonely Kid in like one of these side lanes or something, trying to pressure in terms of towers, because I don't think there's anyone that can deal with Lonely Kid right now. Look at him sitting with the Nash's Tooth and the Rift Maker already. I don't think there's anyone that can deal with Lonely Kid in the side lane. Jash gets a solo kill onto Doom as well. Already has two items completed. The package is going to be there as well. The Kitten's already one step ahead. They're already gone for the Rift Heralds. Oh, I thought Darius was going to steal it there with that little uh, swing. 
of his ability, but uh, they are looking to try and get it there, but they went in. Did they get hit by the taunt? They did. They went back in and got hit by the taunt by the Galio, so I think that was a bit too early of a re-engage there from um, uh, Kittens. Oh with, my uh, god, the, the damage. Oh my god, so the poke damage from that crazy zone from Jash as well, and the Corky and the Jace is doing so much to poke away the threats and the wave clear on the side of Team Kittens. And to be honest, the, these picks are not really working out so far for Kittens. Vex is going to try and do his best to wave clear in the mid, but this is kind of the problem right now. Ramden trying to go for the 1v1 yeah. kill. I'm not too sure if you can 1v1 the Gwen. Lonely Kid actually decides to back away in the end. Maybe, maybe not feeling too confident there, but I really feel like he has such a big upper hand at the moment. Like, look at that gold lead. It's nearly a 3,000 gold lead in the Baron lane, and he still doesn't feel confident enough to try and go for that 1v1. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, he should feel confident. He's like two levels ahead uh, at that current time of that engage. And obviously the gold lead as well. He has two items over the Fiora. Uh, I think he probably could have done that, but maybe saved himself just in case he was needed for this a dragon fight. But clearly wasn't needed. And then down goes the Rift Herald. But we see Kittens take a turret, but they are still down a turret. They are now down two dragons. Uh, it's basically... All the stars oh, are aligning no, right now for kids. MB. There is a gank here on Lonely Kid. He statuses, but then here we come with the Galio ult. And here's Phase Rush Darius. He can cover that distance as well, uh, for forcing Kittens to retreat here. Cool, I thought Lonely Kid was going to get caught out there for a second, but the stasis comes in clutch and Heste's ultimate. This is why Galio is such a strong pick in the support role. They're going to stop them. And oh, Vex, oh. they actually got the kill on to Lonely Kid in the end in bot lane. I don't know how it's they got a kill a half in bot camps. lane. I, I, I thought Lonely Kid survived. I mean, Heste's ultimate already come down. He already used the stasis. But then Don still plays a little bit, not Don, sorry, Lonely Kid, sorry, plays a little bit too aggressive in this bot side and actually gives a kill over to Vex and potentially some more gold here with the tower going down. But meanwhile, whilst that, whilst that was all happening, the mid lane tower went down for MB and so did that top lane tier two tower. So MB, even though they lose the one member, they still take a trade on the cross map. But yeah, Lonely Kid there, he doesn't need to be that far pushed up. He already realized that they were looking for the trade. Looking, yeah, for the kill. looking for the kill. That's it. They're looking for some sort of uh, vo small victories on the side of Kittens. Um, but I think even if we get these small victories right now, uh, it's it's going to be difficult. But Vex coming in here with a uh, clue. But oh. that is a magnificent 3v1, especially when Galio comes in with that massive ultimate. I think with this next match, Galio needs to be taken off the cards. If not, Kittens needs to go the uh, red side and get the Galio within the first two picks because it seems to be that that Galio is making all the difference. Yeah, for sure. It kind of works as like a Shen in a way. Obviously, don't, you don't have the global ultimate yeah. like the Shen does, but he, Galio kind of serves the same purpose where it just stops the aggression. Every, every time, anytime you're looking for a an engage or trying to look for a kills or anything like that, Galio just uses his ultimate and then everyone just has to back away because the knock-up is so strong. That magic shield that you get as well is just so, so strong for Galio and... Yeah, it's kind of the same in the first uh, in the in the previous game. What happened, and it seems like the same is happening in this game as well for MB. But look at that goal lead at the moment. They're sitting at a nice and juicy goal lead here. Six kills to two, four towers to one. This next dragon is going to be so important here for MB if they can secure the triple drakes here on the side of MB. They we could be looking at potential game number five. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna call it at number five to be fair because. I can't see a way Kittens in here. Um, maybe we're looking at a uh, a bit of a case of fatigue within the best of five here for Kittens. It seems like MB's having a bit of a better look with the the draft, the, the, the no length way. of the games have been taken place. They are looking to go for the Baron with uh, Vex nearby with the Yumi, but they There's are no unaware. way they, they get this right. <gasps> the, the, I don't think the Skyrim Orb gained vision. The Skyrim Orb nope, missed they the Skyrim Orb. They don't know yep. the Baron's gone. The Baron is gone, mate. You mean with the ultimate...
kill here. They're chasing down the Fiora. Random oh, looking no. pretty unsafe. What this a drag into the back into the jungle. This could Here be game. Is. I think we're gonna get to game number five. The Baron Lane minion. The Baron Lane minions are coming in. The Baron buff is up. Everyone, we're gonna get a game number five <laughs> in the grand finals. MB take game number four, and Silver Scrapes will be coming up shortly. Oh, there we go. So we we anticipated the five games. I think it was a little bit um, a little bit over. Overcompensating for kittens there, thinking that it's going to be a 3-0 easy. But MB clapping back here with a 2-2 victory. We are now going to be on the last best of five match here. It is all to play for. This is where the drafts come out. This is where the surprise picks come out. But clearly the Darius was just a... Just this a support uh, pick within that one because I mean the, the biggest pick was the the Gwen and uh, Nacris there as well. But all again, it's just that underlying pick of that Galio support is just massive within comp right now. And this is the thing is like when you come into a draft like this and when you pick champions like the Yumi, you're kind of. Uh kind of tunnel visioned on trying to get this Fiora ahead and when this Fiora falls behind they lost the 2v2 in the Baron lane with random flashing forward maybe playing a bit too over aggressive you lose that 2v2 in the Baron lane the Gwen gets so far ahead that the Yumi can't sit on anyone the Yumi has no one to sit on the Yumi can either sit on the Garen who was fall sort of falling super far behind from that uh, to Nakra as that game or you sit on the Fiora the Fiora was already 2000 gold behind already had a huge massive deficit in that Baron lane because they lost that two versus two and that means this yumi pick basically becomes useless you have no one to sit on you can't sit on doom there's no point to sit on doom because doom is basically there to just use the shielding and use the healing doesn't really do too much damage don zero three randoms one and three and this strategy that they had where they kind of put everything in randoms basket didn't really work out in the end and we're going to begin game number five i never thought game i would see five. this yeah, I mean, again, I think the Jace uh, is also at risk of being banned here. Yes. It seems to be the lucky charm. It, it didn't come through in the first two games. As soon as he busted out in that third game with the Galio pick as well, it sort of was just a, a downward spiral. But here we are. We're going to see it. Shen straight away with that ban. To be fair, we haven't really seen a Senna ban in the entire of the series and not been picked, which is interesting because in the groups, it was everybody gunning for that Senna. And now all of a sudden, it's sort of, even though she's not been banned, she's not been picked. Um, and there we go. Yone being banned on the side of MB. Let's see if we can get some other bans in here, like the Galio, because obviously, Kitten's been on the blue side, they're only going to get the first pick once, whereas on the red side, they do get the first two picks where they could take a, a great solid pick, um, like the Ziggs or anything else, like the Jace, and then also take the Galio as well. Now, I'm curious here, I mean, the bans have stayed the exact same again for Kittens. The Ziggs does get banned away, so that's not going to be a first pick priority here for the side of um kittens the first pick in the previous game was that fiora and they did try and funnel everything into that fiora with the yumi pick i wouldn't be surprised if the fiora does get first picked again but they just don't go for the same strategy of going for this yumi pick because i don't think it really worked out for them um, maybe it was a little bit of misplay from random in the end as well i think it was a little bit difficult uh for random in the end the galio actually Belly gets banned is. that's a huge huge ban you feel like you know you were kind of talking about in the previous game blam that galio has been such a big pick for mb in these previous two games and mm -hmm. kittens realize the same thing as well and they take that off the cards yeah the only issue is now obviously there's a lot for this last third ban to ride on you've got camille that needs to be banned you've got jace as well gragas is going to be my next point of view because they can now pick these two i thought it was going to be the gragas but they've banned it themselves and they've locked in the camille so camille's yeah. coming out for the first time in this series yeah it's not banned away it's definitely a first pick priority it's such a strong pick it offers way too much randoms one of randoms uh best champions as well also kittens have played camille in the mid lane so is that bit of a flexible pick here um i think there's no surprise that the camille gets picked up here as the first pick the question is what is the response you go for the jace uh, again jace. do you pick up the nautilus as well even though heste has not performed very well on the nautilus no they, they go, go for the corky interesting so jash feels confident on this corky pick did have a very very good previous game and nakra's also had a really good last game on this jace pick but with the with the likes of the galio and the gragas being banned away 
I would expect the priority of Nautilus to go through the roof, but maybe they're just baiting Clue to pick the Nautilus and maybe Heisei has a response for it. Maybe something like that set could be a response to the Nautilus. Yeah, I was going to either say either the set or the Rakan because we've seen Hestis play a mean Rakan as well as the set from the last uh, playoffs day. Um, but yeah, they seem to lock in the Nautilus on the side of Kittens. Whether they'll go for Vex in the jungle with Nautilus again is a little bit something to be uh, seen. But we see Lucian coming to play this time around. So interesting. Lucian on Doom. Is it Doom's Lucian? I don't think it will be. I don't think mm. we're going to get an ADC bot lane. Uh, yeah, nice hover of the Jinx. Nice, nice memes. Gwen is going to be the pickup in the end, though. So three, three really strong picks that the um, uh, MB were able to win with in the previous game. Lucian's an interesting one. I'm not too sure if this is going to be Lucian bot lane for Doom, or it could be Lucian in the mid lane for Don. We'll have to see where that kind of um, ends up being. Obviously, this Nautilus is a flex pick. Can go in hands of Vex, but Vex didn't really have any impact on the Nautilus in the previous game. It's pretty much like... Um, just uh, running around, just uh, it's just an anchor man, just running around, just doing absolutely nothing. Uh, Yumi actually gets panned away uh, by kittens. It's just like, yeah, if we can't play the cat, you can't play it either. Yeah, I think that's that'd be the only worst thing if uh, MB managed to pick the victory of the whole series with a kitten on their team. It's a bit of a salt in the wound for kittens there, but they ban it out just so that doesn't become a reality within this. But they, they ban the Vi as well, so we saw the Vi come out as well. Um, interesting enough, they ban it. Yeah, two junglers being banned away here from the side of MB. So I'm curious to see if maybe this Gwen or this Jace could be a jungle pick. Rakan being pick, uh, taken away. Respect ban there on the side of Team Kittens. Realizing obviously Heste is a very, very strong Rakan player. Probably wasn't expecting to see it, but we're not really too sure. Zoe getting hovered here. Josh had decent performances before, but the Wukong is still up and available. But where is this Wukong going to go? I mean, with the jungle bans, I'm expecting this Jace to go into Baron uh, in the jungle. Yeah. Which maybe makes me feel like, I mean, maybe Wukong could go into Baron jungle as well. There's so much flexibility. I mean, if they stay with what they did before, then it'd be Jace mid, uh, Gwen top lane, and then Wukong will be in the jungle for Andra Zed, which is still a very, very strong pick. We'll have yeah. to see uh, what kittens are going to finalize their composition with. Ooh, Steve's going to bring out his looks that he's not brought out since group stage. A very interesting pickup here. I mean, Lux is not really that big of a priority over some of the other mages like the Karma, uh, like the, the Seraphine as well. Mm. It, it's a champion that if you can land your abilities, then yeah, you're great. You know, you're fantastic and you can do a lot of burst damage. But, you know, the shielding is pretty decent as well. The shielding is just a lot more difficult to pull off. Xin Zhao is a pretty decent pickup because there's quite a few melee champions that you can knock away here on the side of uh, MB. So it does look like it's going to be Lucian mid lane for Don. And what's going to be the last pickup here for Heste? Oh, is it Mr. Braum? I can only imagine it'd be the Braum, to be honest, because I mean, what other support option do you have uh, that is a tank right now? Uh, and Braum is it. Uh, we could have had the set, but they feel like they don't want to play the set. Uh, they're putting that Wukong into the jungle. Jace in the mid lane against the Lucian. Uh, Gwen and Camille in the Baron lane. That is going to be a great bash in that lane as with the Nautilus and the Braum as well. And then Lux and Corky go head to head in the duo lane. So a little bit of a difference from Kittens here. So we were asking for it. We got it. We got the Camille, the Jinzo. It's basically a completely different team comp other than the Nautilus. So they've retired the Fiora. They are going for one of these champs. Yeah, Fiora wasn't picked at all in this game, which is crazy to think that the priority of Fiora was so high in the previous one. Again, Team Kit is maybe thinking of a game plan, but I think there's no surprise that you picked the Camille here. Camille's a really good pick. Lucian mid lane, I think, is going to be the interesting one against Jace here uh, in the mid lane. I'm very curious to see how that one goes. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> bless me. Oh, I oh, get a sneeze you. out. Get there, a there, sneeze out a just sneeze before. And, and a dab that the chat had been missing <laughs> out on there. I think that was all leading up to the dab that chat has been missing for quite no, some time. No, no, the chat, so. chat's seen enough dabs. They they don't need me to dab another five times. They see me dab all the time. It was just a preemptive sneeze for our uh, fifth and final game. But 
I mean, what a series this has been. This has been everything that I think a lot of people watching have been been dreaming about for this best of five for for Europe. And there's so many people watching right now as well. Uh, we appreciate you all watching and supporting Wild Rift Esports in Europe. Obviously, there is going to be multiple seasons as well this year. So there's going to be a lot that these teams are going to be fighting for over the course of the year. But for now, they're going to be fighting for one more game in this series. MB versus Team Kittens. Only one team can be crowned the champions of Rift Legends Season 1. But what team will it be? Yep, it is all riding on this last match. This is, to the definition, the last match, even though we've been saying it for the past two matches. Uh, this it's is gonna be the last, the last match. match. <laughs> but this has to be and is definitely the last match uh, within the series. And who's going to just peep out on top? Um, the team comp on MB side is looking pretty solid, to be honest. Uh, we saw Lonely Kid dominate on that Gwen. As long as Gwen's not fed straight away, we've seen that double kill on Gwen. But, I mean, it's easy to get a double kill in that Baron lane when your support is the Yumi, especially once your, uh, the person you are latching on to dies, you then just literally become a walk-in target, a free kill. Uh, but now we're seeing the Nautilus with the Camille. It's going to be an interesting play style with this one, with the Braum and the Gwen as well. I have to say that definitely um, Kit Team Kittens do have an advantage in this Baron lane. Brom doesn't really offer too much in the two versus two unless you can get the stacks on. You know, Gwen is not really a great um, early game champion and you have the insane poke damage from the Camille and also the crowd control from the Nautilus. So they definitely do have this priority uh, this time around in the Baron lane. Again, not going for the uh, Yumi, which I think is really, really smart. Vex actually looking for a cheeky little invade with this priority that they have in top side. Mm. Actually forces, forces Andre Z away from the red buff and this is the early game priority that kittens have oh, they're even oh. looking on to andres clue going in clue going in on to andres here doing a lot of damage but uh Braum and uh, gwen being quite conserved there within that team fight yeah i mean they'll be you, you have the priority from kittens in all three lanes but look at this nacris is going to be here as well oh. we're going to get a fight at the red buff there we go fight for red buff this is the way we want the finals the grand finals to finish it all to the wall oh, Josh is very here. aggressive jazz is here gets first blood onto jinzo he may have got the red buff but now it goes back to them we get a kill from nakras as well so it's a 2-0 up already and we could see another one fall but lucian just manages to get out with very little health once again but that's you, if you're gonna go full throttle you're gonna have to mean it you're gonna have to find a way out of there but fortunately for the Jin Zhao and the Nautilus. They both got caught there. Game number five. And we see the roams from the dual lanes. Normally they're just sitting in the dual lane by themselves. But Jash was the one that roamed first up towards the mid lane. We got a full 5v5 fight at three minutes in this fifth and final game. And MB, the ones are come out huge. Huge goal lead now in the mid lane for Necrez on this Jace pig will mean that Lucian is not going to be able to bully as much. And then you have this a little bit of gold lead now for the side of Jash in this duo lane. Such a big win in this early game here for MB and really smart rotations from Jash. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, if they definitely did not go in their favor, they definitely didn't want to give that gold into MB's hands, but unfortunately they did come out on top there it was a great rotation round from jash there um corky coming in to save the day as well uh with a lot of damage oh this is absolutely insane i mean it just shows how much it means to these teams to try and mm. get these little advantages i think the i think the, the Kittens made the right call to try and go for that invade because they had the pushing priority in top lane. They had the pushing priority in mid lane. But again, it was just Josh with the rotations. If Josh wasn't there on the core key, then I think Kittens wouldn't have been able to survive without losing anyone. And they also stole away the red buff. There's just that fast rotation from Josh and being the one that moves first instead of Doom, which is able to just Valkyrie forward and just deal enough damage to get, the, you know, two kills over to his team. And it gives them Definitely. that little bit of a gold lead. But just pointing out, we are eight viewers short of 500 viewers concurrently within this stream. Showing you that 
EU esports is definitely wanted. It is needed. There's an audience there for it. So keep sharing, guys. We need to get to that 500 views. This is massive. Uh, big props to everyone watching. Hopefully, you've been enjoying the oh, cast oh, and there enjoying it is. the series. 511. Yeah, 511. Okay. We shot straight up. It wasn't even 500. 511 viewers. There right, we go. If Rally you're watching by right now, this is what the people want. The people want Wild Rift Esports in Europe. They want it, baby. There we go. So, Jungle Objectives both up now. We're seeing uh, Nakris put a bit of vision there towards the Infernal Dragon, thinking that Kittens are going to go straight for it. Um, it looks like they're going to prioritize the Rift Herald. Uh, this is a great for split, split pushes as well. They did it very well in that first match. Well, last match, sorry. Um, two matches in the row, we've seen some real dominance within these lanes. We saw the comeback uh, match where we saw uh, MB oh, take oh. all three turrets consecutively in that first tier lanes there. But uh, nice all there from Lux trying to steal the Rift Herald. Not quite peeping it, though. Yeah, the Rift Herald does get taken. And the interesting thing is that Team Kittens actually weren't able to take the trade in the end over on the Dragon. So MB are going to get priority on this Rift Herald and on this first Dragon. The big thing is that Lonely Kid is still in the top lane. But look at this. Random has gone back to base and is starting to move. To, oh, I was going to say he started to move towards the mid lane for a second. But he changes his mind and go back, goes back towards the Baron lane. So we could be seeing a four versus four skirmish. We do have a little bit of gold leads on the side of Jash and also Nakres in the mid and bot lane which might give MB a bit of an advantage. Random going for a trade onto Lonely Kid. I'm not too sure if that's what he wants. Lonely Kid dashes away oh. from the hook shot from Random as well. There's a bit of an exchange in mid lane as well. There's so many small skirmishes at the moment that are going in go. favor. Yeah, the wrist hold goes down the mid lane. Is it going to get the charge? It does just get the charge in time before it dies but maybe it's the distraction that MB wanted to try and take this first dragon and Again, this could be a four versus four, and this kid means so much to every team. The Heste with the ultimate. Yeah, Braum with that nice hook up there, and then status on the uh, Braum. The, 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 the dragon's still up. We see a one zero trade on the side of MB here. Can they manage to get any more? They are looking pretty low on the side of MB here. They have to try and go in for this dragon. They're looking for a way in. Jin Zhao oh, tried to one. go in there. They get the dragon. Down goes Jin Zhao because he tried to go deep onto the Infernal oh. Dragon. They managed to get another kill. Blue team take out a one. It's a two to one trade there. So three to one in total by uh, MB. That could not have been closer. That was so intense. Heste with the insane Brom ulti in the end. Knocked out four members on the side of Team Kittens. And in the end, the poke damage from Jash and Andre Zed as well. The flank from Lonely Kid into the back line was enough for MB to take the objective and take a few more kills for themselves. We could be seeing the reverse sweep completion here for MB. They were 2-0 down in this series they were potentially one push away from ending this series with dom deciding to teleport instead of going for that nexus and we could have been seeing the 3-0 series but in the end mb have taken this to a game number five and they have the gold lead here in this fifth and final game yeah, definitely. You couldn't have said it any better there. It was all riding on that victory. Oh, but we see Andre is going in here onto uh, Vex here. The Jinzo goes down once again. I don't feel like the Jinzo pick is going too well for them. There's a bit of assist there from Lux, his ultimate from Dooms from the bot lane. They're all trying to rotate oh, around to help. But there we go. One, one trade there. Estes yeah. goes down under the turret. Uh, Andre is looking pretty low. Nautilus going in with that hookup. Clue going in. Can he get the kill? Yes, Doom gets the kill, so he does serve up as a support should Ooh, for his ADC. Lucian trying to get a kill there onto um, Lonely Kid, but Lonely Kid managed to dodge that Lucian ult, which was oh. perfection. So close. Kittens are still in it. They are still showing that they still want it, getting these uh, little trades. Uh, it doesn't matter about to the uh, gold uh, lead just yet. It's only 1k difference now because of that great little team fight. But uh, we're still seeing uh, Don looking for a way in on Lonely Kid. He definitely has some sort of vengeance there 
for a lonely kid kill oh random needs to be careful though he's gonna walk up to his tower he is quite low on health lonely kid does have the Very ultimate low. as well hesse could With land draw. his q here no he's gonna miss it unfortunately so the stacks of the, of the concussive blows are not gonna come out just yet on the side of mb the second rift herald spawns the package is here for jash mb were a little bit too over aggressive in that top lane dive and random was able to get a trade kill for himself but look at this Every oh the binding just misses Andre Zed was so close to getting caught out there, but he just dodges away from the binding. And that does mean that they get priority over this Rift held. And the first tower even goes down in the hands of MB as well. They have full control over this Rift hold. Jash is a little bit isolated though on sideline. Yeah, he packages it over there just to oh, try and get in to help. Oh, they steal it. Oh, steal it. There we go. It took him three attempts, but Doom steals the Rift Herald. So that is a bit of a, uh, a sore wound there for MB. They drop it in the mid. Uh, a little bit too far from mid lane there. So he's getting a bit of time to rotate and connect, giving uh, MB a time to rotate around. But they do get oh, enough damage to the flank. take out that inhibitor. Uh, Lonely Kid trying to come in with a flank, but uh, random chasing them away here. So we still get a trade on the turret so we lose it in the baron we get it in the mid and as we always say a mid turret is sometimes always better than a side lane this game is this series has absolutely everything all oh, the lux ulti comes through the brom ulti can Ooh. defend the lux ulti and heste is gonna get caught out oh. andre zin flank dashes look, in look for some low. reason and lonely kid is completely dead then dashing uh -oh. in again uh -oh. Uh -oh. Kills. doom with the double kill and the same with don as well kitters have turned this game on its head random as well Ooh. in the barrel lane the barrier comes out the magic shield as well loader kid stays alive he gets the solar kill in the barrel lane what is going on in this series this is insane oh so much to dissect there but literally that's what kitten needs to stay into this fight right now so it was a four bang unfortunately random in the baron lane could not just force that gwen to go down as well that would have been absolutely beautiful for kittens right there uh but it's now leading them into a nice little place there with the gold difference going in their favor right now uh same with the kill lead but it's still all about these dragons these dragons are going to be very important in this because we all know mm. that dragons just keep it over the average of that gold lead it doesn't matter if you're in gold lead there we've seen it with earthlog club uh it is all about those dragons those three dragons really help that disadvantage in the gold but here we go it is looking like we could see a team fight here for the second dragon which is the oh. mounted i'm watching doom at the moment these light bindings are getting closer and closer every single time he's already landed a few clutch light bindings in this game another light binding misses from doom the dragon gets reset so much is guy is on the way at the moment the binding oh, random the way in the <laughs> nice little uh hex -like ultimatum there from random going in onto the jace but we see a trade onto the looks as well so it's a 1-1 one, one already it's a 2-1 to mb right now it's a 3-2 to kittens they are all really really low right now clue uh, oh, we got um, don Wait on there as well they're looking for a way in but they could take it they are going to run down oh, don as well oh double kill from jash but we're on the dragon here. MB looking to take this mountain drake. And it would be two dragons up. Which is going to make a whole lot of difference in these next group fights. This game is too fucking good. This game has everything. It's so good. I, every single team fight is so, so close. I'm getting so high from this. Doom again with the light binding. Insane flank as well from random. To get the flank there onto Nacris. Nacris gets completely one shot. But Jash is completely untouched the whole time and he does enough damage he's not targeted at all and mb win the fight and take the objective look at that gold blam we are dead even in gold 10 kills a piece but two dragons are over to mb what a way to end this series yeah i mean it's definitely going to be those two dragons that keep a difference in these team fights now especially being both the infernal and the mountain but we've seen lonely kid go to head to head with don in the baron lane lonely kid being able to take away that dual lane turret putting them now at a even distance with the turrets now 2-2 but still missing that mid lane turret which is going to be vital for them looks missing out that ultimate unfortunately 
damage would have been massive for Doom there with that Lux ultimate, but it's looking like there's going to be a team fight for this mid turret because MB knows it. We know it that they need that mid turret to do uh, any sort of priority within these next jungle objectives. Oh my god, I need to catch my breath. I, I this I game know. has this series has has everything: backdoors, dragon steals, hell, elder, um, herald steals, insane team fights, insane flanks. This series has had everything and more it's been absolutely crazy and honestly i don't want this again can we get changes to a best of seven are we allowed to change this to a best of seven and get these teams to play more games because i want to see some more wild rifts i want to see oh, yeah, some definitely. more games I mean, between these two teams <laughs> <laughs> who definitely doesn't want to see more especially with these two teams it is definitely neck and neck in this last match as well it's hard to say who's going to peep it, but it's definitely... I'm going to keep re reiterating it. It's those Infernal Drakes, that Mavening Drake. If Kittens don't manage to get this next dragon, it's going to be a bit of an issue for them. Because those three dragons is going to be an issue when it's on your side with MB against Kittens here. It's already at that 15-minute mark. It's Once again, I'm having that flashback of that first match. It's like, what time is it already? It's 15 minutes into Crazy. the match mental the fact that it's going so fast but we're seeing something pop up in this mid lane something is a brewing right now this game it, it it's really going to come down to the little outplays it's really going to come down to what team could bring out and don could be the one caught lonely kids caught on one side oh, don oh. is caught on the other side who's gonna live who's gonna survive lonely kids he actually dashes forward he takes the ultimate from nautilus but what's happening in the oh, top lane don is don is two versus one in the top lane right now he's trying his best he goes down mb takes the advantage and they're even winning the bot lane fight as well four versus three in the bot lane two kills over to mb B. Oh. They're pinging towards the Baron. Could this be the play here? Vex is still up with the smite. Oh my god. Dude, MB. Still, with the, uh, still has the ult. So if the smite misses, the ult could steal the Baron if they decide to go for it. But I think I think they are going to go for the Baron. I thought they were going to go for the mid lane turret. But then we see Doom use the ultimate already to do some damage. Which uh, was probably going to just act as vision onto the Baron. We see Jinzel, we it see comes down Camille to and Lux all here. Can they steal it? They're trying to keep it away from them. There we go. Vex Not back dead. from the Jinzel, but he's been chased down by 3v1. There goes the smite. It is pretty much a secured uh, Baron Nasha here. We see uh, Camille get a little kill on Jash there, but it's not going to be enough. Doom is on the run back into that mid lane, but this is a perfect opportunity for MB to run down this mid lane. This is, this. they still stopped the Baron. That was the main reason of why they were going for that little skirmish. They stopped the Baron Nasha. That's the big thing now for Kittens. The big thing is though, is that this next dragon is spawning in about 25 seconds time. Vex is spawning in 25 seconds. He needs to change to teleport and potentially look towards this dragon or maybe MB do not want to start it when it first spawns. If MB can take this triple dragon, that can be the little nudge that they need to get over this series and reverse sweep kittens you can take ricks away from these players from doom clume and random but you can't take them away <laughs> from being cast to curse and not performing in these grand finals this is absolutely insane how close this is going to come down to vex doesn't need to buy teleport in the end he does just take away the red buffer now does is going to give it over to don and it all comes down to this Drake. I mean, this Drake is so important for both of these two teams. Super important Ocean Drake here, but we're seeing all the teams gather around because they all realize how important this last Lonely Dragon Kids. matchup is now. Uh, Lonely Kid looking for a way in, looking to try Who's and do ulti? some damage here. Here we go, here we go. Andre is here, straight onto the team oh, with the knockup with the Cyclones. There's so much going on. There we go. Shinzo goes down, so there is no smite on the side of Kittens. Uh, Wukong taking out the Camille as well, so he's or currently a 2-0 trade right now. All of Kit uh, MB right now looking pretty oh, healthy dude. other than the... Oh, oh, nice status there. They are pretty low. They're running these minions oh, the into of... the minion wave. Nice status, but it's going to just delay the inevitable. There's a snipe from Nakrez. Absolutely beautiful. Here comes Didn't the minion wave. They probably don't even need the dragon. 
the dragon. They're, they're going to they're gonna try and end the game right now. They could reverse <laughs> sweep. MB have done it from 2 0 down. Don needs to pull off an absolute miracle win strike. Little way. No, it's not, not going to happen. It. It's not going to happen. There we go. It. Team they wide. Reverse swept kittens. What an it's. Oh my god. My brain. Oh. My brain. Oh my god, what the hell did we just watch? I'm telling you, I'm saying it. <sighs> who who did the poll put in predictions to win? Kittens. Who lost? Kittens. Who did he put at third rate? Final Poggers. Who lost? Final Poggers. It is no longer Caster Curse. It is Paul Curse. Neither of us predicted either of these teams to win just the polls it's clear that the spanish community came out in force and uh, deemed the victors in these polls but rather than it being just a straight 3-0 fire it is a complete reverse sweep for mb and there we have it it was just the addition of the jace the Gwen towards the end on Lonely Kid was superb. And then Andrea said, always in the jungle, just being smite different there. Uh, those three dragons, they didn't even need it. They just forced a team fight in that mid and absolutely destroyed it. Unfortunately, Dom was at the end trying to hold the Nexus down. But it, what he would need is Jesus and a miracle. He had neither. They took the Nexus and took a clean reverse sweep. Shoot. <sighs> doesn't know what to do <laughs> with himself <laughs> that is probably the best series i think i've ever watched the wild rifts I, I don't think there will be a series that will ever beat that that was that series had absolutely everything reverse sweep all five games dragon steals herald steals insane team fights it had everything backdoor as well it's, uh, it's an absolutely crazy series